Good morning. Welcome to the Virtual Reality Racing Club here at Silverstone Technology Park for round eight of the Formula Student Sim Race Series. We're just in the middle of last minute preparations for the practicing in the first race, getting ready to uh, stream all of our qualifying heats and finals to you over, over the whole of today. Uh, having a quick look around the hardware we've got for the guys here, you've got six high spec sim rigs running all networked together. We've got drivers competing both online and uh, here in person. I'm Dan Jones, Chief Judge, and over here we have uh, James Monty Montgomery, who's our event captain, who's uh, running everything behind the scenes and will be joining me on the commentary today. Formula Student Sim Race Series is an event that was born out of COVID. We first started it in 2020 for the fully virtual event. Last year we ran this for the concept class teams at the event and we had such a good thing we've decided to keep it going. So this is uh, round eight of what has been a purely online uh, series so far and then this is the grand final here in person at Silverstone. I think I'll just hand over to Monty now who'll give us a bit of an outline once he gets his headset on. He's not listening. <laughs> we just start with a bit of an outline of the action that we've got coming up today and then um, yeah we'll get into some live action of the guys racing for you. Thanks very much, look forward to speaking to you and bringing you the coverage of the day. Hey guys, can you all hear me nice and clear in here now? I've got my headset on now. I completely forgot about that bit. So am I just live on there now? Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and um, I hope that you enjoy today's uh, session. So it is the final round of the Formula Student Sim Race Series. Um, those who haven't heard my voice because you're used to hearing dance, my name is Monty. Yes, the very same Monty from JJ Racing. As always, it is a pleasure for you to hear me today. So uh, I hope that you do enjoy today's uh, session. We've got a action-packed um, rotor of races on today, haven't we, Dan? And, oh, there we just joined in now. Hello. We certainly do. Uh, quickly run over from one, one corner to the next. So, yeah, we have a mixture of qualifying uh, heats today, alternating through each of our teams and their selection of uh, drivers, mixture of cars uh, and tracks, which we'll run through details of uh, shortly. These, uh, the grid positions for the qualifying heats are, have been based on the championship position for rounds one to seven so far and then the points scored from today's qualifying heats will uh, assemble the grids for our series of finals uh, depending on the number of uh, number of finishes we'll have uh, at least a final uh, ed uh, cb and then two a finals Yep, that's right. There's going to be a heck of a lot of finals going on there. Uh, the only thing I can think of which may alter the grids as well is uh, we've got a couple of one-drive entries as well. So uh, if you see on the screens, guys, that we said should be in third and they're now starting at the back, that's because they're a one-driver entry. So per our regulations, anyone entering a one-driver entry team uh, will have to start from the back of the grid for every race. We are trying to encourage as many drivers from their respective teams to well, do as many races throughout the day, really, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's great to see uh, some of the faces of the people that we've been yeah, racing uh, racing with virtually uh, over the, I think we started October, uh, October last year. And yeah. it's, been, it's been a monthly series with uh, visiting different rounds. So the, the theme we took for the championship was to try and follow uh, uh, visit tracks at countries for other Formula Student Series. So we've been to uh, Brazil, we've been to Netherlands, we've been to Germany, uh, a selection of tracks. And then we're finishing here the A, uh, A2 and A1 finals at the end of the day will be GT3 cars uh, at the Silverstone circuit. How appropriate given we're here in real life just now, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. It's almost like we planned it, James. I know. Well, what a good set of coincidence and circumstances <laughs> that was. <laughs> now, um, we are just trying to get you onto the server. Now... Actually, Dan, shall I give you the hot seat so you can just get logged in onto the stream and then I'll make sure our drivers are all good and we will uh, go and look at some action shortly. Yeah, go for it. Thanks Sounds like a plan. All right, see you guys shortly. I'll hand you back over to Dan.
So welcome back everybody. A few technical difficulties that we just need to resolve for being able to stream you uh, race one. Um, but I've got the live timing up on the screen here. Uh, I can see we've got five minutes left to go on the clock. Race one is Caterham Academy cars from Snetterton 300 circuit. In the lead we have University of Cambridge uh, car 16A uh, driven by Wilkinson. Uh, in second place car 20 uh, Al Wahabi from uh, NUST and in third place car 23 uh, from the University of D Dundee uh, driver uh, driver West it's a relatively spread out race from what we can see looking on the live timing so we're not missing too much on the on the action um, you can see uh, on the cameras looking at the guys here in here in the sim rigs they've got nice widescreen monitors they're all driving from a you know, cockpit view uh, of the cars it's was you know, representative of, of real life as uh, as possible for the for the driving experience looking across at the guys on the rigs i can see they're all deep in concentration you may notice that on one of the screens that you can see there's drivers that are are in BMWs at Snetterton for this first round. We're running uh, just the last period of practice for the drivers as well as the uh, first heat in parallel. So for many of the drivers, this will be the first time that they've used uh, these high-end rigs with the direct drive wheels and the uh, hydraulic pedals. So we gave the drivers uh, an hour slot this morning for them to come in and get familiarised with the rigs they'll be using uh, for, the, for the rest of the rest of today. Three minutes left to go now in the first race and it's still Cambridge in the lead. Fastest lap uh, so far of 220.5. Uh, car behind has managed to complete a fair, nearly two second a lap uh, faster so I'm not sure how that gap was uh, established in the first place but they, they do have a 10 second gap to, to close up but at two seconds a lap uh, faster uh, uh, with the number, amount of time left there there's no chance of, make, of making that up so pressure's on Cambridge really just to maintain that lead and secure the points for the win on this um, on this first heat So the car and track combinations that the guys will be using over the qualifying heats, we let them know the, the cars and the tracks that would be used, but not the final combinations that we'll be using for the qualifying until recently. So they have had time to practice driving at these events uh, beforehand, but not weeks and weeks to get them uh, you know, re really, really na nailed on experience in, in each of the events coming up. We're running them with open setups, so uh, as we have for the rest of the online series, rounds one to seven, the teams have the opportunity to uh, develop event and car-specific uh, setups, and that's part of the engineering tie-in with the Sim Race uh, series to both Formula Student and other uh, real-world mainstream automotive and uh, motorsport uh, applications. So it's um, it's not just uh, about the racing it's about uh, developing a setup that means they are as fast as possible but also kind enough to the tyres that they can maintain the performance through uh, th through the races the qualifying heats themselves are relatively short duration so they shouldn't be too challenging for making the tyres survive but once we get into the finals uh, later on in, in today's schedule as we work through from the uh, F, E, D, etc. working up, the length of the finals gets progressively longer. That makes it more of a challenge on the tyres, but also on the driver capability. So they've got to stay focused and concentrated for a much longer period of time without making a mistake to let their competitors through from, through from behind.
we're just about to finish on heat one on the server. The race clock has now now ticked down to zero. We'll be into change over time shortly and we should be able to then bring you live footage from the from the second heat. I'm going to uh, uh, switch off from the commentary for a moment whilst we get that all sorted and I'll speak to you again shortly. The winner of race one there was uh, uh, Alex Wilkinson from the University of Cambridge. Uh, NUST completing on uh, line, coming home in second. And our third place finisher, uh, University of uh, Dundee. Shortly be passing over for, to Monty for a post-race interview with the, uh, with the winner from Cambridge whilst we get set up for, uh, for heat two.
So we're just getting ready to hand over f to Monty for a post-race interview with our winner from the University of Cambridge. So the Virtual Reality Racing Club, it's uh, set up in a uh, unit here on the Silverstone uh, Business Park, Motors One. So you'll probably see over your shoulder a racing workshop uh, in the background where we're doing the uh, post-race interviews. It's just see another example of the synergies between the real world motorsport and the and the sim racing. So the VRRC they do driver coaching uh, here using the sim rigs for uh, drivers they're running uh, in the various series they're competing in the GT championships and 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 other areas. So looking over my shoulder, it looks like we're not far off ready to be able to uh, hand over to Monty for our first post-race interview. Awesome. So yeah, I'm here with our first race winner of the day. It is Mr. Alex Wilkinson from Cambridge. Well done, sir. That looked like a, a good race. How do you get on? Uh, good. It was interesting. Not sure where half the drivers were, to be honest. Um, and I... Didn't do very much practice, so I mean, the start was a bit crazy, but once I figured out how to drive, it suddenly went quite well. <laughs> yeah, no, well, hopefully you've got plenty more opportunities to drive uh, later on uh, in the series. You'll be back for a second heat uh, later on this morning, and then, of course, your combined results from there will make up your finals. I uh, assume you're hoping you're one of our championship contenders at the moment, so I'm assuming you're aiming for finals A straight away. Yep, aiming for GT3s around Silverstone. Fantastic, fantastic. And keep an eye out for Cambridge guys. They are Team 16 on our cars here. If they make it into Finals A, you'll be looking for a lovely white, blue and gold car. Think uh, best chance of making it? What, what were you going for? 9 out of 10? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. If we drop into one of the lower finals, we just get more racing, more fun. That seems fair enough. Now, is anyone else in your team going to be driving later on today or are you doing a one-man show today? Unfortunately, it's just me. So, yeah, long stints. Ooh, this should be fun then for Alex. So he's got a lot of racing to do today, as well as a one-driver entry penalty. That means Alex is going to be having to start at the back of the grid for uh, every race that he does. So this should make for some interesting action later on in the day, I think. Very best of luck to you, Alex, and well done on winning the first race. Thank you very much. Back to you, Dan. Thanks, Monty. I think, uh, yeah, ad admirable uh, ambitions for the day from, from Cambridge there. But as a single driver entry, they are hamstrung in that they will automatically be defaulted to the back of the grid for each of their races. Um, it's a penalty we run for single driver entries uh, in, in the series. Just got a few last minute preparations for the second race. So I'm going to drop off the commentary whilst we get that up and running. And we'll be back shortly with uh, qualifying round one, heat two. Talk to you shortly. Welcome back everyone. We are three minutes away from the start 
of Heat 2. Uh, it's a repeat of the same car and track combination, but for different uh, drivers and teams. Just bear me one second while I get that to disappear. So our entrance for this round, we have University College London on pole position, Staffordshire University, University of Sheffield, University of the West of England and University of Portsmouth EV. So Portsmouth are one of the unions that have entered two teams into the series. So you'll probably hear us over the course of the day talking about Portsmouth EV and Portsmouth IC. Two minutes to go on the countdown to the start of the race. In terms of forming the grid so far, it looks like we've got UCL, Staffordshire, Sheffield and UE just waiting for, oh, there we go as we talk about it, so uh, Portsmouth EV uh, arrive on the grid. Everyone revving their engines for no good reason before we get ready for the start. One of the things the guys do have to be careful of is the jump start penalties. So um, if you've been watching the sim race series over, over, the, over the previous rounds and the months, you'll notice we've remember that on race one we've tended to have the more experienced drivers but then in race two the uh, less experienced uh, sim races and uh, both combination of jump starts and a little bit of carnage on the on the start of the laps the format we're running here at the uh, at round eight because we've got the limited number of sim rigs um, we're at a maximum of seven cars on track at any one time a combination of the rigs being used here and those competing uh, competing virtually so that reduces the likelihood of us having uh, first uh, first lap and first corner uh, pileups but I'm certainly not promising that that's that's not not going to happen I'm certainly not putting anything uh, past these guys down there they are all students we've seen what they've done earlier on in the series so um, no disrespect to them they're very enthusiastic they're all very fast but uh, that enthusiasm uh, has led to some uh, impressive pileups at the beginning of most races we've seen including at Mugello where they didn't even make it to turn one Sounds very similar like the world of F1, if you remember when we went there to Mugello during COVID. I think that, that was the, it was the race that never started until you, halfway through. You're quite right. That's F1 standard starts that you're going to be seeing then, guys. So 20 seconds to go until the start of this race now. If you're wondering why the grid slots are staggered, that's because we, we've uh, yeah, not all of the entrants have, uh, have taken up their, their, their slots. As we get into the lights are red. It looks like a clean start for everyone for the start of heat two. UCL maintaining the position from pole going into the very fast first corner at the Snetterton 300 circuit. That should be a ooh, sideways on the way in. That's already lost in three positions and that's Staffordshire through into the lead. Yes, no, I think uh, UCL are, are going to be uh, kicking themselves for that one, pole position, and then they uh, lost it all in the first corner there. Never mind, we've still got 10 minutes to go, so uh, they've still got uh, a chance to pull it all back. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got Staffordshire at the lead, UWE second. They are one of our championship protagonists for uh, this weekend. They have a chance of taking the title. Oh, and who's that that's gone off? That looks like, and just as I say, that's UWE going off now. Ah, right, OK, well, there goes their championship hopes. Um... Never mind. So we've got Staffordshire in first, Sheffield in second, UCO already back up to third, and then Portsmouth EV in fourth. Now, will UWE be able to uh, make up some places, make up some time? They're already 16 seconds behind, and it's, well, it's only a 10-minute race, Dan. I think that's them. Game over. That's a lot of time to claw back in the limited number of laps in, the, in these short heats, but it's a close battle for the remaining uh, four contenders at the, at the front of the field. If we... Um, hop on board with Sheffield we should be able to go for a on board view as they try and chase down Staffordshire ahead I love a Catrim they sound mega they look mega it's uh, a proper driver's car this isn't it yeah no no driver aids lightweight uh, relatively low power so it's a momentum car you've got to uh, uh, carry as much speed through the corner get a good exit and as we say that looks like Staffordshire have lost a little bit of time on the brakes head closing up closing up for Sheffield so it's into, into the the bomb hole 
Oh, he was going to try something on the outside there. It's only the first lap, so he's biding his time, but uh, he's definitely the much faster of the two at this moment. And come round Corum towards the, towards the end of the lap. This is always uh, tricky, so a very, very long right-hander, but then towards the end, you have to brake while still turning right before going left. A prime example there, so Staffordshire are coming to the, the pressure and letting Sheffield through into the lead. Yeah, that's a great shame. That's uh, Staffordshire going to be kicking themselves as well. I don't think they've left... Oh, no, they've rejoined the track now. And another car behind, I see, also falling off at Murray's. So, um, two down, three to go. <laughs> Unfortunately, that incident has spread the, has spread the field out. So, I think as the, as the fastest car, we'll stay watching Sheffield for the moment or keep an eye on the gaps and see if uh, either of the teams are able to to close that up or whether we get any um, yeah, action further down the, down the field. Well, there we go. They've just spun out from the lead now. So it looks like Portsmouth EV have a chance to take the lead. Oh, around the outside. And there we are. That's uh, Portsmouth EV into the lead. Very nice. So back on board with Sheffield. So after that uh, mistake into the hairpin. It's a proving surprisingly tricky car and track combination for these guys. It's the... Um, Yes, no, I wasn't expecting this. We, we, uh, the, the concept of today was uh, to start off with the lower powered cars on relatively easier and well known tracks and we'd start making it a bit more exotic as the day goes on, uh, ramp up the challenges. Um, if this is the challenge they're finding on the first combination, then uh, I think there's going to be uh, plenty of entertainment and for our younger audience, plenty of meme opportunities to come throughout uh, today as well. So a bit of an... Uh aborted attempted pass around the around the outside so that's opened the gap back up between Portsmouth EV and, and Sheffield uh, further down it looks like we've got battle developing between UE and UTL UE have just made the pass so we'll just have a quick switch to have a look at those guys yeah yep yeah. so that's one position made back up for UE so uh, that's at least one extra position that they'll be getting from this uh, just as a reminder guys so what the, the format for today we've got two heats that all teams will be taking part in this morning this will then determine their positions for the finals in the afternoon so it's the average position uh, finishing position of heat one and heat two that will determine uh, what finals they will be entered into um, we were hoping that UWE or expecting I should say UWE to be in uh, the A finals or B finals which given their championship contender. We're expecting them to be in the top two for both their heats. Um, expectations not quite there. Having said that, uh, Portsmouth EV just went wide out of uh, Murray's there. This could give Sheffield a good run on them down the straight. Absolutely, absolutely, Monty. So that gap's closed back up to uh, under half a second. If we go back riding on board with Sheffield again, we should be able to uh, see as they chase Portsmouth EV down and see if there's a overtaking opportunity on into the um, into the hairpin at the start of the lap again of course this is where they lost the lead previous uh, previous lap so discretion may be the better part of valor here no just again. like that <laughs> <laughs> commentator's curse so yeah good job dan <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that will not be a first or the last uh, uh, occurrence today so i suspect uh, they've got their brake bias uh, set to rearward on the car and the uh, as they're as they're braking hard for the hairpin they're locking the rears and that's causing them to, to have that issue yes no, it does look like that it's either that or i could hear possibly they were trying to downshift to first there uh, correct me if i'm wrong but um if that was a downshift to first then well it's probably the synchro snatching up the rear wheels as well yeah exactly and with these cars um there's no auto blip enabled so they do have to uh, get heel toe for the for the downshift so if they're forgetting to do that either the brake bias or the or the heavy engine braking on the on the lower gears so that really has opened the gap up again Ooh, corner entry oversteer again i think yeah i suspect it is the driver technique needs some in, some some improvement there for for the manual car absolutely so let's switch to staffordshire or oh, another oversteer moment with those guys this is a uh, Come on, guys, it's meant to be racing, not drifting. <laughs> well, that's allowed UWE back up into third, so uh, their recovery does continue. So commentator's curse may have struck for Sheffield there, but uh, not for UWE. I thought with that 
the gap that opened up on lap one, they had no chance of, uh, <laughs> of recovering. But, but as, as events have taken place ahead of them, then that's you know really given them the opportunity to get back up into one of the podium positions in the final. And with just over three minutes left to go on the, the clock, who knows what's going to happen in the time left? I don't, I don't even want to guess this now. Um, uh, I, I thought that was all the action done after the first lap with, uh, what, 16 seconds to spread the whole field. And yet here we are, they're uh, all clo uh, clawing in back on each other again. So, um, yes, just over two laps left, I, I would make that. Uh, oh, no, here we go. Oh, no, he made it. Okay, that's fine. I thought he was about to lose all that progress again there. Phew. It was one of those brown trousers on the steering moments, but yeah, just managed to get enough <laughs> grip on the on the on the front wheels. So easily the fastest lap there for uh, for you compared Six to the others. Six seconds faster. <laughs> exactly. I would like to say that's a uh, driver skill, but that's probably just by default for not spinning off that lap. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what the lap times will look like for the next one. Now, can Sheffield make around this time? No, they can't. They've done it again. Three laps in a row, and that's UWE up to second. Yeah, I think the um, uh, talking about the lap times, it's imperative not to make mistakes. Um, if you're if you're pushing for that hundred hundred percent potential, um, but uh, you're yeah, just over the limit and not able to to ride the edge of that limit. It's much better just to back off to 90, 95% effort, just to guarantee that you get round a, uh, a lap mistake-free, because your um, your total race time will be much lower that way than with the um, with the the time shed from from costly mistakes. Absolutely, it's uh, a matter of uh, getting to the finish line first, and as they say, in the slowest time possible. But uh, with the minimal mistakes. Um, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Portsmouth EV do and if they've learned from their mistakes because there have been incidents in the past where they've been in very good positions and rather than consolidating their third or fourth position, they tried to go for an extra place, ended up binning it and dropping down to 10th or 11th. It'll be interesting to see if uh, they've learned from that and can hold on to the win for this one or um, if we're going to see some more action in the last lap, Dan. We shall see. I think it's it's comfortable for them with a lead of over seven seconds, but it's closing up quite nicely between second, third, and fourth. So as we come towards the um, probably the, the the final lap, we do have the potential for some uh, last lap battles. Yeah, second, third, and fourth. They've got uh, the gap closed down between them all now. So um, well, if Sheffield do another spin into turn three, that will uh, potentially be them down to fourth. Uh, I'm sure UWE will be uh, happy with their damage limitation, getting back up to second. Um, yeah, no, first heat done. We'll see what happens in their second heat. It's an entirely different combination for that. So um, just as they've got used to these cars, the next time we see them on the track, they'll be in a single-seater in a completely different uh, continent in the E-world. Oh, so remind me, so is it Tartus Formula 4? In uh, Dubai. Coincidentally, exactly the same weather conditions as in Snetterton, which is believable given uh, looking at our British summer today. <laughs> exactly. I'm scaring everyone with my spindly white legs in short spec today, but the um, yeah, much required for uh, yeah for, for the unusual but well, well welcome Silverstone weather. <laughs> yes. And a uh, round of applause to Sheffield for making it around the corner at their... F no, just as I say that, they've done it again. <laughs> right, well, that was definitely the commentator's c uh, curse. On that note, Dan, I think I'm going to disappear and go and get ready in the interview panel. <laughs> yeah. Thank thanks, Monty. I'll see if I can curse them some more. Get ready for the, for the post-race interview. So the leader is on the final lap. Let's ride on board with Portsmouth EV. See if they can make it through the... Uh, to the end of this lap to take the victory in this uh, heat two. Yui have managed to close the gap down to uh, five seconds and it seems to be closing a reasonably rapid rate of knots but it's still a big ask to close that gap in the in the remainder of the lap. To go down the long back straight at Snetterton, it's going to seem like a seem like an age in these relatively uh, low-powered catrums. Another difficult uh, braking and turning right through the chicane and into the faster section at the end of the lap. Gap five seconds, so should still be comfortable for the win.
Sheffield going wide off on the grass, but maintaining the gap to Staffordshire behind. Think they may have had a little help onto the onto the grass there, but so yeah, end of the race. That is our winner, Portsmouth EV. Second place, University of West of England. Third place, University of Sheffield. Fourth, Staffordshire University. And I'm not sure what happened to UCL, but um, yeah, another 30 seconds behind our fourth place position, but UCL uh, coming through in fifth place. So the drivers are just doing their changeover, uh, changeover now, and James will be getting ready for the post-race uh, post race interview. We'll be handing over to James shortly. I shall uh, drop off commentary for a second whilst we get ready for that handover. So looking over my shoulder, it looks like the guys are assembled, ready for the post-race interview. We've got the um, winner from our uh, second qualifying heat there, uh, Portsmouth EV. Over to you, Monty. Dan? It's, um, yeah, as you can see, they've given us some uh, bean bags now. So uh, this is nice and chilling. It's uh, a nice way to do the rest of the interviews today. I think we just need a spliff now. We'll be, no, I can't say that. We're live on TV. We'll, we'll just relax here. It's all good. I'm here with Portsmouth EV, Mr. Callum. He is the winner of our second race of uh, Heat 1 today. Callum, congrats. You made that look really, really easy. Was it? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, what happened? I mean... I was off the last grid because I'm a mini driver, but then me and UWE had the battle through the first section and uh, it got a bit tight. Uh, I'm sorry for him if anything was wrong, but yeah, it was a bit tight. But then it was just being careful. It's the, that car is not exactly the easiest to drive, very easy to spin, so it's just being careful and keep it consistent. And a very consistent job you did there. We were mentioning in the commentary how in some of the races earlier this season you were in a good position and at the point where arguably you should have settled down you went for glory and binned it so i was very very glad to see you uh, come over the finish line first today big relief expectations for the rest of the day 
very big relief. Um, and expectations? I wasn't really in expectations, really. I was hoping for a final C at best, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I know there's some fast drivers in this grid, so we'll see what happens. Well, you put yourself certainly in a good position to try and get higher up in the finals there. Big congratulations on your first race there. Can't wait to see what you can do in the second heat. Otherwise, that's everything there. Dan, back to you. Thanks, Monty. We're uh, just assembling the drivers, uh, getting them in the server for the start of Heat 3. So teams we're expecting to join for Heat 3 are Kingston University, Queen's University Belfast, University of Hull, Harriet Watt University, University of Salford. So they're all here uh, at Silverstone and then racing uh, online, uh, University of Stavanger. On the grid so far, we've just got uh, Salford, who have uh, spawned in. Two minutes on the countdown clock to go. So could be a lonely race when we get some more entrance. So that's Harriet Watt, just joined as well. At least we now have a race. So this is the third of uh, four heats in the first round of uh, qualifying. We then switch over to, it's the same, uh, similar groups of drivers, uh, a repeat of uh, four qualifying heats, but as we were just discussing with Monty before, so we're moving to the Tassis uh, Formula 4 at the Dubai Auto Autodrome. Um, it's not the full uh the full lap you're familiar with from f1 side it's a shorter race it's more appropriate for those uh slightly sl slightly slower cars um yeah looking forward to see how the teams handle that different challenge in comparison to the um these catering academy cars that they seem to have struggled with relatively so far slightly uh, uh slightly unexpected but let's see uh how it goes in this in this third heat we are Less than a minute now until uh, till race start. So we have Hull, Harriet Watts, and uh, Salford. Still waiting for representation from uh, Kingston, Queen's University, uh, Belfast, and University of Stavanger for to join remotely. And that's the lights on the countdown for the start of this Heat 3. Excellent start off the line for uh, for Hull. Should easily hold that into the first corner. Let's ride on board with Harriet Watt in third position off the start. Quite tentative through that first corner. That's opened up a gap to the guys ahead already. So let's switch to riding on board with Salford. I think it was a lightning start for the whole guys. No penalties flashing up for a jump start. Oh, we've got similar, was that a punt from behind or similar similar locking the rears? I think it's, let's switch to the outside cameras for this close racing between Salford and Harriet Watt. Yeah, so this should be a good battle to see. Uh, Salford, they are one of our championship contenders. And then we've got Harriet Watt here, who unfortunately are not in the championship. Well, they are still in the championship, but not for outright honours. Very, very rapid team. Uh, definite pace there. Um, I think arguably you could say in some races their performance was a bit erratic. It would be interesting to see what they can do to, uh, this weekend. I'm sure they, they'd love to go out uh, with top honours and try and win this round outright. Yeah, I seem to recall in some of our late earlier rounds on race two that Hull quite often ended up in a pole from the from the reverse grid uh, arrangement. But it was it was very rare that they managed to maintain that gap and see that through to the win at the end. But looks like in this qualifying heat they've comfortably got a gap ahead. But we've got some close racing between Salford and Harrier Watt, and it looks like it may may carry on for the for the whole ten minutes of the race. Fantastic. That's just what we uh, need to see. Now, Salford, as I say, they are the championship contenders, so I was expecting them to be the fastest, actually. But uh, here we are, first lap, and they're already six seconds behind the leader. So, um, as we saw in the previous race, this doesn't mean it's all over just yet. So it just takes one, speed, uh, one spin, 
and uh, that could be everything reset. But uh, for the time being, Hull are getting a chance to run away as uh, Harriet Watt and Sofa keep on chipping over each other. So Harriet Watt much, much quicker into the uh, chicane at the end of the uh, end of the back straight there. But then Salford stretching the advantage a little as we come towards the end of the lap. But it seems like they've uh, you know, different strengths at different portions of the circuit. Here we go. Here we go. Can you get him in before the last corner? So Straight in. Nice. On, on the outside going Ooh. around the corner. And he's held it. There we are. So that's Harriet Watt up into second. That was an amazing move, actually. Don't really see many passes going into the corner. And on the outside as well. Absolutely. Dif difficult pass to execute. So now Salford sat in the slipstream of, of Harriet Watt. These caterings do punch quite a, a reasonable size hold in the air. Or late on the brakes. My goodness. Nearly oh. made that stick. It was a late lunge. Not quite there, but the um, second opportunity for a late lunge coming up right away. But no, more sensible on the on the brakes there. So yeah, it's, we should similar pace over, overall over the lap between these two teams. So yeah, the bat battle should remain to the end. But this this battling between the two cars is allowing Hull to to walk away with it. Gap to first place now over ten seconds after just one lap. My goodness, that's amazing. So unfortunately, we are missing a couple of competitors from uh, this heat. Um, unfortunately, uh, they've not arrived at the um, at the centre here today. Um, oh, little twitch there. He's just held on to that. That's fine. So uh, we seem to be uh, missing uh, Kingston. Belfast, unfortunately, weren't able to join, and neither were the University of Stavanger. So uh, that was a shame. Uh, it means that we've got half the field here. But um, still, as we can see, some good racing, even with uh, just three on the field just now, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. So two cars makes a race, but you know, <laughs> three gives it more <laughs> chance of it, be, <laughs> of it be, being interesting. Exactly. I mean, that's interesting. It's a it's a, a distinction to make between there's lots of people who will try sim racing and they just hot lap. So they only drive on their own practicing on circuits and it's a very different discipline to um, to be able to race and race consistently to uh, uh, you know, grinding away the laps just to try and set the fastest time. And of course we are, sure, should we call you Sim Racing Royalty, of course, with your JJ Racing. Do you want to uh, tell everyone about your uh, your, your exploits <laughs> in Sim Racing World and how, how you... How, how <laughs> I, I I prefer the term sim racing meme queen, thank you very much. But uh, yes, no, I, I've been around in eSports e for nearly 20 years now. And um, it's for a lot of people who don't get the chance to sample motorsports uh, properly, um, this kind of stuff is a fantastic way for them to get involved, uh, be it either within the community, um, either to understand. I'm probably being a little bit biased because when I went to university, I did a whole thesis based on uh, simulation vehicle dynamics, um, basically going onto simulators like here, building the cars uh, for Formula Student, our Formula Student team, and then determining from there what car was going to perform better through various setups, various engine guys as we had going on there. Um, so be it if you're interested in cars and you just don't have the money or exposure to go to your local race circuit um, or you, you just don't like the danger of motorsport but you enjoy being able to virtually drive quick like we can see here, then uh, eSports is an amazing way, uh, the virtual r racing community is a, an amazing way of uh, being able to get involved uh, in exactly that. That's kind of what I've been doing. I'm 30 now so I've been doing this since I was 11. And um, it's a wonderful way of just getting to meet a whole new community, meeting the motorsport professionals. Um, and in itself now, um, it is a paid competition. Uh, you get a lot of um, Formula One teams now entering their own esports team in, say, Gran Turismo franchises, uh, Assetto Corsa. They want to be in there because they recognize that as the simulators have become more and more accurate, uh, the physics engines have become more dynamic, the data that people are picking up from these simulators are comparable to what you would find at a real circuit going with the real team. So you see so many drivers with their own rigs at home now. They'll be on here for hours in the evening doing their practice for their races come the weekend. And um, it's great to see more and more people getting involved in the community. And uh, I'm glad to see Formula Student trying something like this as well for this year because uh, obviously with the real contest itself, um, there's a huge emphasis on mechanical engineering, designing the car, building the car. But um, what we're seeing here, the purpose of this contest 
is the other aspect that you see in motorsport. It's the tactics. It's the working as a team to get the best setup in a limited amount of time. Just as a reminder, so the, the earlier rounds we've done in the year, um, they've been... Uh, they were given a couple of weeks, they were announced what the combination was. They had X amount of time to get together, work out what's the best way to set these cars up to suit the car and track combination, the weather combination. And then, of course, the driver dynamics as well, because everyone has their own driving style as well. So it's been great to see how each team has adopted their own implementation as to what's the best way to make the car go the quickest. We've thrown in a couple of clangers as well with the uh, limited allocation of tyre compounds. So for some of them, they want to use their soft compound in a particular round and they take the compromise of running a harder compound at another circuit because they've identified you know, damage limitation type thing. So there's a lot of aspects to this, which um, is great to see Formula students um, ex exploiting, is that the right word? Exploiting these kind of factors, which um, hopefully all these university students, when they go and join the industry proper, once they've all graduated, uh, to be able to get this exposure as well. Exactly, Monty. It's, as I mentioned in the in the introduction, this is a it's a, a, a child of COVID. This event, so yeah, we, we ran a fully virtual event with uh, yeah, sim racing over two days in 2020 when we couldn't hold a, uh, a live event. At the, at the end of it, we realised we yeah we had we had we had a great thing and we wanted to carry on. It increases the uh, number of opportunities for engagement for the. Um, uh, different student members of the university teams and there's different uh, areas of interest for uh, yeah, for the for the students to get involved with and as you mentioned um, yeah it's, it's it's a great fun element but it is also uh, you can take it uh, very seriously there's examples of transitions both from uh, sim race to real world uh, racing several yes. several well-known examples with uh, Jan Mal Jan Marlborough and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and James Baldwin, and more recently Jimmy Broadbent going from the uh, you know, uh, racing in the shed to racing racing in the in the Praga Cup. <laughs> yeah, no, he did um, a very good job there, and don't forget uh, Rudy Van Buren as well, being able to pick up a, a job through McLaren through winning their contest uh, for yeah, some yeah, racer as well. Absolutely, yeah. So you do have people who have the. Uh, running through the the fastest gamer events and are now doing simulator driving for uh, for the F1 teams to you know help help develop the the, the cars and 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 the setups for the for the guys actually there racing at the track. I believe that's what they call technology and progress, and it has been exciting to see how far it's come. Because uh, as I say, I did a thesis on this, and this was seven years ago, and even seven years ago, it was a bit of a, a black magic getting someone onto a computer. And uh, c can you really believe what the simulator is telling you? We still prefer listening to the driver's feedback. So actually, it's been great to see how many more people have started to utilize the simulation uh, equipment, be it if it's computer AI simulation or get the driver in the loop and get them to provide the feedback instead. Um, particularly those who they've actually driven the, cl uh, the car in real life and then you get them into the virtual world here. Um, it allows you to build a much more uh, reliable and comparable simulation model. Um, and most importantly, I guess then the, the big benefits from there is you can do unlimited testing in a virtual world. You know the data is relevant. Uh, and probably in the all students' um, minds, when you eventually crash the thing, <laughs> you just hit escape and go again rather than game over. Now you need exactly. to go and find some money to go and build the car again. Exactly. It's, it's, it's much, much cheaper in that regard. And it also you're able to uh, have control over some of the things in the real world that are variables that make your development challenging. So you can have consistent tyres, you can have consistent track conditions, or you can set the simulator that they are varying throughout the event to match the real world. So there's, there's, exactly. there's, there's pros, pros and cons. Absolutely. I see we're on the final lap now, Dan, so I guess I better go and head back over to the interview podium, shouldn't I? Yeah, thanks very much, Monty. So I think, um, yeah, Hull are running away with this one. So uh, let's ride on board with Hull for the rest of the race. So unless commentators curse strikes again, they should be crossing the line uh, in first and be going to see Monty for a post-race interview shortly. So that's through the chicane at the end of the lap, accelerating out. Little lift into the bomb hole, back on the throttle. Conservative lift on the on the way into Corum. No need to push it with a 20 second gap to uh, second place. Easily done braking in final corner left hander onto the start finish straight.
And that is Hull crossing the line, finishing in first position. So let's switch to Harriet Watts. Oh, we just see Salford pushing hard in the background there in the aim to catch up. So in our heat three, second place finisher is Harriet Watt Racing. And that'll be Salford coming through in third. So I need to jump off the server, get ready for qualifying uh, heat four. Uh, we'll be back shortly to hand over to Monty for the post-race interview. Thanks very much. So what you might not be able to appreciate from watching the stream is that we've got to do quite a logistical dance between uh, between rounds and get the, the drivers off the rigs that have been currently racing uh, whilst we're getting the, the drivers in ready for the for the next round at the same time, get them logged in for their for their user their specific settings. That gave us a little bit of a traffic jam in getting uh, Hull ready for the post-race post -race interview, but I can see now they're assembled on the rather comfy looking beanbags. I am jealous, Monty, but I oversee you for the post-race interview. <laughs> So, yes, here we are. We're with our winner of Heat 3. It is Hull. It is, I've forgotten your name. Uh, Mateusz Cerwatka. It is Mateusz. Well done, sir. Well done. You made that one look easy. Ten seconds in the lead by the end of the first lap. Was it really that easy? Uh, just, I think first lap was just to get away, uh, concentrate, focus, good lap, uh, take all the apexes and try to uh, run away. Yeah, well, you definitely did that. The uh, mission accomplished there. Well, as I say, 10 seconds by the end of the first lap there, and you just we couldn't see by the end of the race there. So nicely controlled. So fair play for that. We've got a second heat coming on later. Expectations for that? Going to go for another win? Hopefully, yes. That's uh, the attitude. So we're, we're aiming for finals A then this afternoon, yeah? Yes, definitely. <laughs> good man, good man. Well, well done for this one. That was a really good race. Really was dominating to see. So um, are you doing the next race or is it your teammate doing it? No, my teammate, uh, Hazan Zaki, is doing my second race. Fantastic. Right, so we see... We do. Fast. <laughs> Run again. <laughs> so there we are. So I have another representative for Hull for the second heat later on today. Otherwise, well done. That was an amazing race. Dan, back to you for the fourth heat. Thanks, Monty. Yeah, that was a dominant victory in that, uh, that qualifying heat for, uh, from Hull. We're just getting everyone in and set up on the rigs here for heat four whilst we're waiting for that and the server to start. Uh, so teams, if we have a full grid, teams we're expecting for heat four are University of South Wales, Trinity College Dublin, Portsmouth uh, IC, University of Wales, Trinity St. David, Thanks, Monty, for scheduling Trinity College Dublin and Trinity St. David in the same heat to give us the commentating challenge. Uh, then University of Bolton, University of Southampton, and uh, remotely is York University. So they, that's York in Canada, not York uh, in the yeah, northern counties of uh, uh, here, in, here in the UK. 
I'm just going to see if I can get into the server. We should be. We are. Yep, server is live and assembling the grid. I'm just going to drop off the commentary whilst you know, get ready with the cameras to, to bring you round four, our last qualifying, uh, our last heat of qualifying round one. Talk to you shortly. Hello guys, it's Monty again, so I'm just covering for Dan, uh, so uh, I'll be doing the commentating for this race here. We have got just over a minute to go before the race starts, so we're just getting all the races in. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a busier grid this time. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, oh look at that, I can count, six people in the, this race. So uh, we have got... Uh, we have got the University of South Wales, we have got Trinity College Dublin, we have got the University of Portsmouth. We have got the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. The University of Bolton, uh, who are joining us online. So they are not actually here at Silverstone. They are uh, remotely connected in for this one. The University of Southampton. And we were supposed to have York University with us, but uh, as they are based in Canada and it's 3 o'clock in the morning there, I can fully understand why they have not made the start of this race. Though we do miss you guys. That's enough of that. 15 seconds to go. We're about to do the countdown and the race will be on its way. We have Southampton, the main championship protagonist in this race. They're starting at the back. What can they do? We're about to find out because the lights are going out. Now and away we go. Amazing start from um, South Wales there. Launching away into the lead there and leaving the rest in their wake going into turn one. We are focusing on Trinity College. Don't tell me that's Lee that's just spun off. He has spun off and he's taken out everyone with him. Oh, beautiful. See, we told you guys, we told you guys, you may only have six cars in here, but that doesn't mean we can't have a pileup. So, after University of South Wales have binned it, it's now, um, they've gone and done it again. Great, fantastic. Bolton, they're into the lead, and Southampton from the back of the grid, immediately up into second place. Portsmouth third. South Wales, they've recovered back to fourth there. Got tri um, da, 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 Trinity St. David in fifth. And then at Trinity College Dublin in sixth. And ten seconds behind with what looks like a front wheel looking a little bit knackered. So um, hopefully he can catch up from there. Fingers crossed. But um, I suspect this is going to be damage limitation for them for the rest of the race. Anyway, enough of that. And he's made it around the corner. Well done. Back to the leaders. It's Bolton leading from Southampton. Portsmouth. University of South Wales. That's a lie. They've just been overtaken by Trinity St. David and South Wales. have gone back up the inside. And they've gone and spun on the exit. Okay, never mind. So that's them down to fifth. That's Trinity St. David to fourth. Right on the back of Portsmouth, third and fourth there. Let's see what's going to go in there. But no, Bolton are pulling away with this. They are um, two seconds ahead of Southampton. Southampton, 
They are uh, a final specialist here. We are expecting them uh, to be there. They are currently the leaders of the championship overall in this series. So um, I know they want to be going for the win in every single place possible, but they just want to make sure they can make it into the finals so they can maximize their points. Now, Portsmouth, that's an error on the exit of Brundle there. So that's Trinity St. David up into third position. Oh, what a first lap that was, guys. Incredibly entertaining stuff. Meanwhile, uh, Trinity College Dublin, they're now 18 seconds behind the leaders and University of South Wales are 21 seconds behind the leaders in sixth. That's a good bit of uh, battling for the first race there. Let's move back on to the leaders. So we are on this nice suspension shots with Bolton there. We could at least see uh, how the uh, physics engine models the uh, suspension movements on the car there. But now we're back to our conventional TV cameras. Following behind... Um, Bolton coming into uh, the corner. We've seen so many people spin off here. That looked a bit twitchy, but they got away with it. They got away with it, so that's fine. Okay, good. Southampton, they're through Trinity St. David. Wide on the exit, but uh, understeer makes a nice change from the understeer we've seen with everyone else. They've made it through, as have Portsmouth. Nice. Okay, so we have got seven minutes left of this. Don't be fooled, though, guys, into thinking that's it racing over because of uh, the field spreads, as we've seen in the other three races so far. Just because they spread out doesn't mean we're going to have someone spinning off, and then it brings them all back together again. Though, I'm glad to see Bolton have been able to make it. Um, we were hoping they would have been joining us at Southampton. Southampton? <laughs> we were hoping they would have been joining us at Silverstone today, but uh, unfortunately, uh, they had to pull out of the FS competition proper. So um, not only are they not here with us in the sim rig place, but they're not actually here for the uh, Formula Students event that you'll be seeing on this channel live streamed as well throughout the weekend. So um, we're very glad, guys, you've managed to at least be able to join in for today's events. We really hope that uh, you do enjoy it and we hope that you can make uh, the most of this experience. Um, definitely making the most of this opportunity just now, coming up to the end of the second lap, and they're now four seconds ahead of Southampton, our championship leader. Um, so as a reminder, the format, so all teams will be doing two heats this morning at two different combinations. This is the first combination, it's Snetterton at Catrums. Then we're going to throw them into the Tatus F4 cars around Dubai later on uh, for the morning. And then what we'll do is we'll average their finishing position from those two races. Those with the best average positions will go into the finals A. Those who with the less better positions, they'll be in finals B, C, D, E, and F. Then from there, what will happen? The winner and runner-up of each respective finals would then start at the back of the grid for the next final, so they progress to there. For everyone else who um, or hasn't made it into the top two, that's their race done, that's it finished, that's them done for the day, and they will collect X amount of points respective for the round, which will then go towards their final championship position. Once we're all done with today's activities, we'll be back to make a cameo appearance tomorrow evening during the awards ceremony, uh, where we will be announcing the champion uh, of the FS Sim Racing Series and giving the champion their trophy. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're expecting today. Mr. Dan, welcome back, sir. Thanks, Monty. So uh, looks like we here. We've got a fuller grid for this final heat four of round one of uh, qualifying. Bolton in the lead. Southampton, our series leader, in second place. So it's their second driver. Uh, four and a half second gap to Bolton ahead. Um, we've got a reasonably close battle between uh, fourth and fifth. So yeah, Portsmouth obviously just passing through to take third place and Trinity St. David they've been having a good ding dong all uh, through this race so far it's a nice little love tap coming out the uh, uh, coming out the hairpin Ooh, getting back on the inside there nice really close racing it's a shame you weren't here for the first lap actually Dan because um, we had a first lap pile up into turn one the leader spun off and took out everyone with him so um, hence why we've got the spread of a uh, field of cars now oh, but, okay. um, Un un understood I think yeah that will make it to the highlights reel for the uh, for the award <laughs> ceremony I'm sure <laughs> absolutely we've got to make sure that that gets into that one tomorrow so Trinity today we back back through again but we are running down the the long back straight so close between these guys switch to the outside camera <clears throat> breaking into the 
fast left right chicane. Trinity St. David holding on. Just about Some holding on. Looks like Portsmouth yeah. have gone wide. Ooh, lost a bit of momentum there. It'll be interesting to see if they can catch up from there. If uh, that's the break that Trinity St. David need just to kind of run away with it now for third. Yeah, of course, no DRS or anything like that in these Caterham Academy cars, so it's just purely down to the uh, driver consistency. There is a small toe effect, um, if you can follow closely behind, but yeah, nowhere near like the, uh, the DRS advantage in uh, higher levels of motorsport. Checking the gap at the front, relatively consistent between Bolton and Southampton, so we'll, we'll keep following these guys for the moment, see if uh, Portsmouth IC are able to close up, but... Uh, over a second quicker on that lap, Trinity St. David, so looks like they are stretching stretching their legs and pulling away from Portsmouth IC. Let's switch and ride on board with Southampton, see if we can see Bolton ahead. Just about in the distance. Just there in the distance, so yeah, something to aim for, something to chase down. It is a tricky balance of when you're, you're trying to, you've got a gap like that to close, of pushing to, to close the gap, but not pushing over the limit that you're, that you're shedding time in the corners, I think, there. Probably a little late on the brakes into the hairpin. Didn't didn't quite miss that apex. Politely, it was a country mile, but the um <laughs> <laughs> need a GPS to find that one. Um, but uh, yes, no, it's um, to be fair that they've been very very clean here. And um, as much as I think Southampton wants to win every race today, I think they're more interested in sealing up the title, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And that's where yeah, consistency, making sure that they they make it through to the A final and securing the points to. Uh, uh, to give them the chance of w w winning that, winning the series overall. Just over a minute and a half to go, so I suspect this is the penultimate lap. Then, so we get one final lap in with uh, all the drivers there. Bolton, of course, they uh, they've virtually logged in today, so they're not with us at Silverstone. They uh, at their own university today, uh, joining remotely. So fair play to them. I'm glad they've been able to join in, and uh, what a good job they are doing from. Uh, the confines of their university uh, s space. Indeed, I think we were expecting them to be here on site at Silverstone, but they uh, they withdrew from the main Formula Student uh, event, so aren't uh, aren't down at here down here at Silverstone now. So hence them uh, also joining us uh, remotely. That gap is staying stable around the uh, four point eight to, to five seconds. So I'm not not sure how much of this gap came about from the uh, from the lap one pile up, but it uh, looks like that might have. Uh, yeah, you know, <coughs> cost us the uh, cost us some close racing. Well, yeah, there was a bit of that. Um, Bolton were about two two and a half seconds ahead by the end of the first lap. Uh, Southampton, fair play because they were having to start from the back of the grid, being the championship leaders, and it's uh, a reverse grid of your championship position. So, um, no, a good recovery drive for them. Yes, they lost a bit of time because of the uh, pile up there, but um, yeah, no, Bolton just snatched the lead into the first turn, and they've just not looked back. And, and, and well done to them in, a, in, a, in achieving that. So it's the, as we said, on several of the heats before, driving consistently at a decent pace, but uh, yeah, not not pushing so hard. And uh, similar to the uh, our previous race with, with Hull, looking at the best lap time. So 2:17 for Southampton here. I've just seen that Trinity St David had done a 2:18. So similar pace uh, through the uh, through the field. So uh, as we move into Heat two for the qualifying with a uh, Tatis uh, Dubai on the next on the next round. Then uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some closer on track action in those uh, next races. Switching to Bolton as they're on their last lap. Let them uh, enjoy the last half lap of honours. Hopefully they don't spin off, but uh, they seem to have this well in control. Famous last words. <laughs> but um, no, it's been an amazing race from Bolton here. It's uh, been the most action-packed one we've seen. I mean, they've all been action-packed in one way or another. But uh, yeah, no, all the calamities in the, the first lap there, that was uh, exactly what we'd be expecting. It just wouldn't be a Formula Student Sim race, so without at least one first lap pileup somewhere. And um, yep, no, Bolton have taken advantage of everything here to um, kick-start their round eight in perfect fashion. Just coming into the last corner, into the Murrays now. Yeah, breaking for the left-hander, makes the apex clean and, and tidy. And a straight drive to the line. Congratulations, Bolton, winner of uh, Heat 4 for qualifying round one. That's Southampton should be crossing the line to confirm second shortly. That is Southampton across the line. 
So I'll, I'll, th I'll think I'll free Monty up to go get ready for the now customary post-race uh, interview. We can't do it, can we? They're not here. So um, we, we, we'll think of something else uh, to see if we can get hold of Bolton in another way, guys. So I'll leave yeah, that one with me. Yeah, might have to catch them later on, but we can still interview uh, the Southampton guys. And Trinity St. David crossing the line for third. I'm not sure what happened to Portsmouth IC, so the remainder of the race, that gap really ballooned to another 20 seconds behind. Just about to cross the line to confirm their fourth place. And then we have University of South Wales through the bomb hole into Corum. the final left-hander and they are yeah they'll be crossing the line to confirm that fifth place so we saw that uh trinity college dublin disconnected during the race i'm not sure what their problem was but so is uh university of south wales crossed the line for fifth place that concludes uh heat four from uh qualifying round one so that is all of our our four heats completed We'll exit the server, get ready for the changeover to the next round of uh, heats, and we'll reconvene for that shortly. Talk to you in a moment. So we're assembling the grid for uh, heat one of qualifying uh, round two. I can see that, uh, so winner of that last race was the University of Bolton. As Monty mentioned on the commentary, they are uh, competing remotely from their own uh, university, so we can't get them uh, on the beanbags. So we've got our second place finisher from the University of Southampton where, with James. Over to you. Thank you, Dan. Yes, so uh, congratulations to Bolton. That was a very nice drive. A shame we can't interview you just now. We're going to see if we can find you guys later on and uh, tune in remotely. However, just now we're going to have a chat with our current championship leaders and the runner-up of that last race, Southampton. I'm here with their driver, George. Good job. Second place. That's uh, a great way to start this weekend's racing. How are you feeling on that? Yeah, it was good, actually. Um, there was a bit of carnage right at the start. Um, understatement of uh, the year <laughs> so we got caught up in a bit of that and I think Bolton managed to just slip by um, the gap was pretty consistent about four seconds for the whole race um, we couldn't quite close in at the end but actually considering 
um, that they're not actually here, they're on their home rigs and stuff. I think we can be pretty pleased with that overall. Yeah, that's actually a very a valid point, actually. Yeah, so uh, it, it does sound like excuses, guys. But uh, for a lot of these drivers here, they'll have their own um, rigs at home. So they'll have their own controllers. They'll be, um, what's the way, you, you feel comfortable with how the yeah. wheels feel and the pedals. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's A lot of it is about comfort. Um, it's also about settings with the wheel and the pedals as well. So when you're at home, you can really dial in where exactly you're sitting, how hard you're pressing the pedals and how stiff you have the steering as well. Um, so when you're coming to a place like this, obviously they have amazing rigs, much more than I have at home. Um, but actually it does take a bit of time just to, just to get used to the whole thing, how the steering feels, how hard you need to press the pedals. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. So normally maybe a slight advantage being at home, but actually we've had some great kit here as well. And I think uh, it's been so fun to use. No, I fully agree with you on that one. And having said that, given you've got all of that to consider with, second place was a magnificent job, especially from the back of the grid. Mm. Now we're just gonna go onto a bit of a side path here because you guys are currently leading the championship. Yep. Um, not putting pressure on you, but it's yours to lose. <laughs> um, <laughs> You guys have been arguably the most prepared uh, university we've seen. We've seen your teammates are in the practice servers. You're always uh, conferring with each other, trying to get the setups done. Tell us, in a nutshell, what is a typical preparation for you guys going into each of these rounds? How have you, te how have you guys in Southampton been preparing for these rounds? Yeah, so we try and take it quite seriously. Um, the good thing about the format of the event is teams can take it as seriously or as fun as they want to. Um, so what we spend a lot of time doing prior to the event is, is looking ahead, looking at the calendar, seeing what races we've got coming up next and what cars and tracks we're using. We'll spend a lot of time trying to dial a setup in. Um, so normally that's by myself and Mike, who's my partner, who's just about to race now. Um, we'll spend lots of time by ourselves, um, running laps and really trying to dial a setup in. He has quite a lot of setup experience so that really, really helps with that. Um, after a little while, when we start getting along a similar pace, that's when we'll hop into a server together. Um, we might try and practice a few things like practice starts, which have really, really helped this past year as well, um, just being able to pull away from the line. Um, and also, sometimes it's fun just to have a little bit of a battle as well, kind of get used to a bit of the race craft that we might need to use for that particular track and that particular car. Um, and we'll be doing that right up until the event. Um, we also need to balance the fact that the qualifying sessions normally last for a week beforehand. Um, and how we balance our time both in our offline servers and in the practice server as well. Um, so quite often we'll go into the practice server, uh, maybe on a baseline setup or an older setup, feel out the, the, the competition a bit, see what their pace is like, um, don't reveal too much about what we've got right up until the qualifying session. Um, and then in the race, um, that's when we just try and excel really. And as you guys may have seen in the previous races, that's exactly what they've done. And uh, in round seven, they uh, left there with 100% uh, points. So um, the preparation, the effort has definitely paid off. Well done. Second place, as you say, Mike's about to go and do his race now. We're going for a win? We are going for a win, yeah. So um, we've had to balance as well for this event our practice between the different heats and also the finals. So the way the finals are run, there are lots of different finals. So we've kind of tried to hedge our bets a bit about what particular finals we're going to be in. Um, but again, we've, we've put lots of practice in, so we're ready to go. We're ready for the win. Fantastic. Well, very best of luck to you guys. Let's hopefully see you in the finals, A. Eh? Otherwise, I think we're just about ready for the next race. Dan, back over to you. George, well done. Amazing. Well, that's perfect timing, James. So we are, the lights have just gone out for the start of uh, this race. So uh, we've got Portsmouth IC, University of West of England, Southampton and Cambridge competing in this race on a long run down into the first corner. Portsmouth IC holding the holding the lead. Southampton already through into second. Let's ride on board with uh, our third place car because we should be able to get a good view of the action for uh, all three cars. So this Dubai Autodrome circuit is not the uh, the Abu Dhabi circuit uh, raced on uh, in F1 and we've gone for a slightly shorter format of the circuit that's more appropriate uh, for these cars. That looks like we've got a pass for the lead ahead, so that's Sheffield through into first place. If we just go back on board with Portsmouth IC. I've not had the chance to, to test uh, this track myself uh, beforehand, so it's my first uh, first site of this track it looks to be a nice fast and flowing circuit and um, uh, 
with these Formula 4 cars, they are, they're quick single-seaters, much quicker than uh, most road cars that people will drive, but the, um, they are still relatively underpowered compared to the grip that they have, so carrying that corner speed through the corners is key to generating the, the lap time and being competitive. I think it's stretching out uh, between first and second, but Cambridge uh, currently in fourth place. Uh, looks like they've got the pace to be able to catch up to the guys ahead. So we'll follow these guys and see if uh, yeah, a battle develops. And a strong exit out of the final corner on to start finish straight. So that gap closing to less than half a second. Breaking hard into the first corner. Downhill, long right-hander. So yeah. Looks like Southampton, just from that post-race interview, you've heard about their professional approach and the amount of practice that they're doing pre-event and how seriously they're taking this. I think that's evident in the uh, they're streaking away uh, in front. But uh, between Portsmouth Slide C, UE and Cambridge, it's relatively close. So UE just attempting a pass up the inside of Portsmouth Slide C. That's a successful pass. Oh, no contact. And that is, uh, yeah, Yui spinning out as a result. I think, unfortunately, that put pace to their uh, hopes for this heat. But we've still got close racing between uh, Cambridge and, and Portsmouth. Yes, that's a bit of a shame to see what's going on with the uh, UE there. Uh, they have, um, at the beginning of the season, it was really much Cambridge versus UE for this. And as the season's gone on, we've seen more and more of these uh, kind of incidents happening with them. And... Um, Salford have kind of picked up the, the messes and in there, as have Cambridge as well, and they've started picking up on it. And uh, I think really, as we're coming into the end of the season now, we, we are seeing the the true championship battle here, which is um, Cambridge coming up. Uh, just need to get past Portsmouth and then see if they can catch up to Southampton. However, they do have their um, their fast driver in that car now, and as we can see, six seconds ahead. I think um, this is very much his to lose, isn't it? Uh, it seems that way, Monty. So, uh, you yeah, know, stretching a gap of over, uh, yeah, over seven seconds now over the course of uh, of two laps. That's a significant pace advantage. Um, so, you yeah, know, quick driver and evident of the setup unpracticed that they've uh, appeared to have done beforehand. But um, we'll see if if Cambridge are able to get past Portsmouth Side C, what their pace is like in free air, and um, yeah, whether they're able to close that gap to Southampton ahead or or it's a, a nailed on second place for them. Well, hopefully, hopefully this is the pass for second now and they can uh, crack on with the rest of it. Ooh. Keep it tight for this one. It's Almost nice. a repeat of the previous lap, but yeah, Portsmouth C running a little wide onto the AstroTurf and that's uh, you know, giving Cambridge the breathing space to be comfortable. Although uh, Cambridge now late on the brakes. That's um, a brand new racing line there. I, I didn't realize that strip of tarmac was part of the, the racetrack, Dan. That's another postcode, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> another 50p and a stamp, mate. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, licked the stamp and sent it a little bit too hard on that one. <laughs> uh, that's often the way after someone makes a pass that the um, uh, yeah you're trying to stretch the gap to the car behind to, to secure the position and you just miss your braking point and, and sail on, sailing forward. But luckily for us, that gives us a, a opportunity for a repeat on this on this third lap. Maximum entertainment, and that's just what we need. Uh, again, it's 10 minute uh, races uh, for this combination, guys. Um, it's obviously a much shorter lap this time. I think of the Caterhams, we're doing what, two minute tens? We're doing about just high 130s here. So, um, a few more laps, uh, that means a bit more action, and um, we'll pass us like that from Cambridge. Nicely done. Let's see if they can hold on to it, or if uh, Portsmouth will get them back on the straight. So Portsmouth, oh yeah, on, Portsmouth's on the outside here. Yeah, not able to, to hold that into a, into a left-hander. So let's stay riding on board with Portsmouth and, and see the relative pace between the two cars. On that last lap, the lap times were within a tenth of each other, um, despite uh, Portsmouth having to go wide from the <coughs> Cambridge overtaking. But, of course, Cambridge making that mistake and allowing Portsmouth back through. So both of them taking liberties with the uh, definition of track limits here, I think. This is probably my fault in the driver's briefing for telling them that track limits weren't switched on. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Lesson, lesson learned for, for next year. Although, to be fair, Monty, I'm not sure that would have made one iota a difference. Oh, I don't think so, really. It's, um, it's kind of settling into 
it's a natural pace now this race where you can see um, no disrespect to Portsmouth Cambridge our championship contender Portsmouth are lower down in the field uh, I'm impressed to see what they're doing oh and a big slideways moment there from uh, Cambridge so um, they've got all that work to do again and get seconds I don't think they want this championship do you Dan <sighs> yeah it doesn't doesn't seem like it <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's a nice spoonerism slideways I've never heard that before oh, so. <laughs> thank you it's a uh, copyrighted JJ racing patent <laughs> yeah, not heard that one before, and definitely uh, yeah, bank that one for for use in the future. <laughs> so, I do want I do wonder if the setup that Cambridge have developed is for this track is a little bit too edgy. So it might be quick, but it looks like the um, uh, that was a snap oversteer moment uh, for them. So again, they're giving themselves the challenge of chasing Portsmouth and executing a, a pass down again. So let's uh, see how this develops. Here we go. Feeling a bit of deja vu now for the fourth or fifth attempt now. Breaking the toe there, a bit of weaving along the straight. That's allowed, that's fine, as so long as you do it once. So um, they've had their turn. Portsmouth getting a bit defensive. What's Cambridge going to do? Around the outside. Around the outside, around the it's outside. It's the, <laughs> the, the late cutback earlier on the power than the car ahead, but a tight corner ahead. Portsmouth, I see wide on that left-hander again, as they seem to have been every lap so far. Mm -hmm. Now a tight right-hander. Can Cambridge get the cut back on them? Just to be str strong, Ooh. strong exit now onto the long straight. But oh good, yeah. e good exit for Portsmouth as well. It's the defending well. I think it's going to be a case of lunging it into this corner if they want to make a pass. Heavily cambered, so you can do things on the outside here. It's a very unusual turn. Can they get the switch back? Ooh, no, Portsmouth held onto that nicely. Now it's a bit single file through here, through the last corner. And um, it looks like we're still going to get two laps left. Preston has uh, just gone past the line with 1.45 left. That last lap was about 1.37, so penultimate lap coming up. So uh, two more laps left for Cambridge to get second position. Again, Very no defensive. Nothing in it lap times-wise between the two cars. Shades of Schumacher and Barrichello back at the Hungara ring there. Showing my age there, I think. But the <laughs> 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 so that's Cam Cambridge through again. Yep, and that's but Portsmouth back through again. <laughs> so it looks like this is going to run and run until the uh, end of the race. Is great. It's what we like to see. This is fantastic. So here we are. Brilliant run out over that corner from Cambridge. Down the straight, down into the hairpin. Will they be able to get on the brakes and actually hold on to position this time? We're about to find out. Ooh, he's held on. He's got the inside. Close, but no contact. But that is Cambridge through into second. Let's switch to on board with Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Congratulations for making the racing line that time. Oh, oh no! And that's Cambridge out, and that's Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth back up to second. That looks like a proper spin for Cambridge there. Oh, what a shame. That does correct under pressure. They're at risk of third here at the moment as well. So if they can get up back up to racing speed they should be able to hold it but any more mistakes like that and they'll be um yeah uh, down to fourth be interesting to know whether they're struggling with tire temperatures or something like that with their setup or it's um um but yeah the car looks very very edgy very edgy indeed yes yeah, so this seems a bit uh, too much to handle and just as the race has gone on it's uh, just become more and more unpredictable so let's ride on board with Yui, see if they've got sight of Cambridge. I'm chasing that down. Looking at the gaps, it looks like Cambridge do comfortably have the pace over, over Yui. But now that gives them a, a, a large gap to close up. So it's been very quiet for our race leader, uh, uh, Southampton. Um, they've demonstrated very strong pace. So let's ride on board for them for a little while. And uh, yeah, they can show us how it's done around this Dubai Autodrome track. It's a beautiful circuit, this. Full circuit as well is even better, but for these uh, cars, it's uh, a, a too big a circuit for cars of uh, this power. But um, it's a nice challenge. As you can see, all the corners they're, they're nicely cambered in. It kind of works with the car. Um, little bits of uh, blind crests and stuff like that as well. And as, as you can see, what Preston's doing there, he's not needing to reimagine the racing lines. He's just clipping those curbs, pointing it straight. Off he goes. This is my favourite corner on the whole uh, circuit, though. It's just uphill really tightly cambered and then comes back on itself again like a roller coaster yeah 
shades of Laguna, Laguna Seca, not quite as extreme as a corkscrew, but it's uh, in, a, in, a, in a similar vein. Absolutely. That, that, that reminds me, there is a Porsche test track where they've got a selection of the corners of the world. So they have Eau Rouge at Spa, they have 130R from Suzuka, they have the corkscrew from Laguna Seca, all in one single test track. I'd love to go and drive around that. Yeah, I think I would as well. But for the time being, I think uh, we need to congratulate Mr. Preston. So that's a second and a first for Southampton in their heat stand. I think that's uh, set the standard for the other teams for the remaining heats. Indeed. So you know, it's, uh, it'll be struggle to be, uh, I think, could only be equaled, not bettered. Yep. No, I agree with you on that one. So we shall see what happens. However, I'm going to go and find Mr. Preston and we're going to find out how he did that all. See you later, Dan. Thanks, Monty. We'll hand over to you shortly. So uh, confirm finishes for that race then. Southampton... Well, winners in first place, Portsmouth IC in second, Cambridge uh, maintaining third after that uh, spin during the battle with Portsmouth and uh, University West of England uh, finishing there in fourth place. I'm going to exit the server to start to get ready for the next qualifying heats and uh, yeah, we'll hand over to Monty for the post-race interview shortly. So our winner from that last race was uh, Mark Preston from the University of Southampton. Uh, just getting ready for the interview with James. So these guys have actually been uh, racing uh, between themselves on track in the uh, uh, UK Sim Racing Universities uh, Challenge. So they're familiar with themselves from their from their own uh, on track battles. But I suspect this is the first time they've met in person. So I'm not, no fisty cuffs from any previous on track antics. But um, <laughs> hand over for for James for discussion of what we've just seen on our, our qualifying heat. Just let you know, James, we can't hear you at the moment on the stream. We need to... OK, yeah, I think uh, it looks like we've got technical issues resolved. Pass back over to James for take two. Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. Uh, yes, remember to plug in your cables, guys. That's all I'm going to say. So that's uh, the end of uh, the first race in Heat 2. As we could see from there, dominating performance uh, from uh, Southampton, Mr. Michael Preston. Well done, sir. First question I have to ask, do you ever smile? Yeah. Oh, good. Fantastic. Right. How was that race? Yeah, pretty good. A uh, bit slow off the start compared to testing at home, but yeah, it's good. A bit better than practice as well because we had a... Um, a power surge was it in practice so i only got like half a lap of practice on the rig so i didn't really know what to expect but that no, was good so, so that's a good point actually you were in there completely in the blind half a lap so um uh, your teammate george was uh, telling us before that the differences in the, the controllers from what you're used to at home compared to in here and then of course if you've only had half a lap that doesn't give you a, a chance to find out like the brakes the throttle and all that kind of stuff um how are you feeling actually going into this race yeah i mean we we obviously knew what the venue was going to be like and for me personally the rigs aren't dissimilar to what i have at home so maybe a slight advantage but the every time you get into a rig that's been driven by somebody else it's set up for how they like to drive and the cars that they drive so it's you, you always have to be learning as soon as you get into a different rig and yeah it takes a couple of laps to get back up to speed but in the end i think got there by the end of the race i know certainly did the job there and they won by uh, quite a comfortable margin so well done for that uh southampton have really set a high standard a second and a first in your heat so um 
Hopefully that will get you into one of the uh, higher tier uh, finals. That's a, a very high standard you've set for the other drivers uh, to beat now. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're going into the finals now. Any expectations for there? What's the target now? Are you, you going for the win? Yeah, I mean, the, the target was always the win, especially with how this season has gone as well. I think just getting the win in the last round, is it would put it out of reach of everyone else and it'd just be a nice way to uh, out Icing on the cake, yeah? Yes. Well, we've got. We haven't won it yet, so. No, you're quite right. It's, it's it's never over until it's over. But um, carry on as you guys are driving today, and um, it should hopefully be yours. We wish you the best of luck for that. But uh, well done to Michael and to George, who's lurking in the background there. A great uh, heat stint there. Dan, we're going to hand back over to you for the second race. Thanks, Monty. That was perfect timing. I've just logged the camera car into the server. We have a relatively full grid for for this heat. And uh, it's the return of the rather fetching uh, Battle of Britain livery on our pole sitter, University of South Wales, uh, my fellow namesake, uh, uh, Jones. In second, we've got Trinity St. David. Then we have Harrier Watt, Sheffield, Bolton and uh, NUST. I'll switch back to our pole sitter. I'll exit out to one of the more zoomed out trackside cameras. And we'll await the countdown for the start of our uh, second heat in this second round of qualifying. Just over two minutes to go to the uh, start of the race. I'm not sure where Monty found this skin pack from, but yeah, I do like <laughs> do like that uh, uh, fighter livery and the attention to detail. So the uh, the number even in the Roman numerals format rather than the conven conventional numbering. With that camo livery, it's whether the uh, uh, is there any stealth? Will they be able to race away and get away from the others, or are we going to be treated to a close on track action between our? six uh, competitors I think based on what we've seen from previous rounds with the drivers we've got on the grid we should have a uh, you know, relatively similar pace between the majority of them um, uh, Bolton one of our faster uh, drivers uh, starting from uh, a lower grid position based on their championship position so uh, expecting to see them try and yeah, battle fight through, fight through the field so it should be an exciting exciting race ahead. So less than 30 seconds to go to the start of the race now. We'll be getting the red lights up on the screen shortly. Five lights are up and relatively long hold. Race start. So University of South Wales getting away relatively cleanly consistent gaps between the majority of the field will they make it through the first corner so on board with South Wales it looks like Trinity St. David made it through into first Bolton have made it through into third already it's right on board with them on the outside of University of South Wales, so yeah, it's bolting up to uh, second already, carving through the field. Harriet Watt have been dropped slightly off the start. They've got NUST up the inside of them into this uh, tight corner. Bolton have made it th through into second and now challenging for 
or, f or first. So it is all action on this first lap. Trinity and David successfully defending uh, on that corner. But Bolton getting a better exit on the outside into this corner though. So can they hold that position? Again, they're on the outside for this corner. So looks like, yeah, Trinity St. David maintaining that position. Good defense there from, uh, from Trinity St. David. Staying on board with Bolton as we come up towards the end of our, well, our first lap. Similar exits between the two cars, but Bolton in the slipstream. Car ahead defending, Bolton duck out. And that is Bolton through it through into the lead and relatively safely so it would seem. Let's jump back to University of South Wales so we can see some of the action ahead and also the what they're having to do for defence on the car behind. So Bolton stretching the lead to over over a second already, but it's relatively close between the rest of these cars behind. So on board with NU, uh, NUST. University of South Wales ahead. Uh, about to uh, looks like we're about to attempt to pass on Trinity St David. Certainly lining it up for for later in the lap. I've been very impressed with how close this race has been actually so far. It's uh, no one's above ten seconds behind the leader, so uh, it's still anyone's uh, race to win. That looks like any. Oh no, I thought we were going for a lunge there. So, um, but Bolton again in the lead there. So. Potentially, after Southampton's great drive, and I've just bigged them up on uh, the interviews, it looks like Bolton's about to go and one-up them. Yeah, and you might be having to interview uh, a yeah, second-place finisher uh, uh, again. So um, <laughs> if, if Bolton do manage to get a win and a win in their heats, then that, 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 does, uh, that would beat Southampton on their first and second for the, uh, for the grid for the finals. Absolutely. Not sure but if we have... Oops, sorry, Dan. So close racing still between these three cars. So switching to the outboard uh, cameras, focused on any UST, but it's capturing all all three because it's you know, so close on the times between them. Where did you find the skin pack, Monty? There's some outrageous liveries in here. <laughs> I downloaded about five or six uh, different skin packs, which I found, and uh, I just did an absolute mix mash of the lot of them because I went, yeah, we've got some bright colours here. Um, didn't appreciate we had one with a Spitfire livery on it, though. So um, no, exactly. You'd missed that. Missed that during the introduction. I was sending the attention to detail as well. The numbers, even in the. Uh, <laughs> oh, is it? Oh my goodness. Oh, that is really good attention to detail there. No, I'm very impressed with that one. That's uh, very good. But uh, no, so long as it makes it easy to identify with these cars, um, fantastic. No, indeed. But having said that, so whilst we've been uh, you know, blathering on about liveries, we've missed a little bit there. So University of South Wales, I think that was a mistake. That's dropped them down into fourth position. NUST up into third and looks like about to uh, execute a pass for through into, in, through into second. So... Both of our uh, starters from further, further down the grid have successfully navigated through the through the field, making it up to the front. So you know Bolton there in the lead for first, and now NUST in second. Um, barring any disasters like we saw for Cambridge in the last race, I think you know Bolton should be able to hold on to that. But relative pace there between second, third, and fourth, that was a 137.9 for NUST and 139s for both of the cars behind. So. Um, Expecting any RST to stretch a gap now. So oh, someone's gone off into the other circuit. Oh, he's come back now. Who was that? That was a Trinity St. David, I believe, in the third position there. Looks like huge understeer and almost went off into the main GP circuit there. Interesting. <laughs> so obviously not as not as intended. Uh, that does uh, yeah, open the gap a little up to any RST. So I think our likely remaining track action is going to be between Trinity St. David and uh, yeah, University of South Wales. 
University of South Wales as well, just as a reminder, guys. So uh, they are a relative late joiner to the series. They've uh, only been uh, with us for the last couple of rounds. Um, been very pleased to see an extra university join in. And uh, it sounds like having a chat with the drivers earlier, they've they've enjoyed the challenge and they're, they're looking forward to doing a full season next year. So um, yeah, we'll be looking forward to seeing them back and see what they can do once um, well, they've got a full season of racing. And by default, they're always going to be at the back of the standings just now. But um, once they're on level pegging field, I think we could have another one to throw into that top five mix. Yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah, for any of the teams who are watching uh, watching the stream or haven't taken part in the Sim Race series this year but um, but are interested, then uh, yeah, do feel free to drop a, an email message over to fs at imickey.org uh, or come and find Monty or myself at some point later in the event and you can get some details of how to, how to get involved. We will send out uh, information for next year's um, series sometime uh, during the summer break as we line up to get started uh, yeah, September, October, uh, later this year for, for the follow-on series. Now, the battle for third rumbles on. Nice tidy exit there. Will uh, South Wales, but now a bit too far behind there. But uh, if Trinity St. David lock it up into the hairpin, this may open up an opportunity going on to the next straight. Um, it's all about the pressure, really. It's so, so close um, in difference in the pace. So it all comes down to driver errors. And as Dan said in a couple of the earlier races we've done, it's all about minimizing those uh, errors, keeping the consistency up. So then you, at the end of the race, you have the lowest uh, overall time come the end of it. So when we're in situations like this, where there's really not a lot of um, differentiation, shall we say, between all the drivers and their uh, individual lap pace, it all does come down to who's going to make the most errors. At the moment, as we can see, uh, NUST have um, capitalised, shall we say, on Trinity St. David and uh, the University of South Wales's um, bickering, uh, or squabbling over positions to pull out a little bit of a gap now, even though the actual raw pace is about similar. So um, it's now down to Trinity St. David and South Wales to try and keep it on the track, capitalise on any errors and uh, go from there again. Yeah, and with a minute and a half left on the race clock, I uh, expect that'll be two more laps to to, uh, to complete. So there is there is still time for yeah mistakes to take place and yeah for the I, for each of the drivers to take advantage of that. I'm not so sure about that, Dan, because it was one minute thirty as second place went by, and they're eight seconds behind Bolton. Now a lap around here is one thirty-seven, thirty-eight. So I think we should be watching Bolton as they cross the line because this could be. They're either going to finish this lap or go over the line with one or two seconds uh, to go, I suspect. Yeah, you may be right. We'll, we'll find out shortly. We'll get the notification above for saying the leader is on their final lap. Absolutely. But um, if that is the case, then it is now and ever for uh, South Wales. Good little move there, trying it on a Trinity St. David, but um, nicely defended by a Trinity St. David again. And, um, yeah... I, for University of South Wales, I'm sure they're hoping this is the second to last lap. Uh, for Trinity St. David, they must be praying this is going to be the last lap. Either way, it's been a, 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 a good race long battle between these two cars in particular. And we'll see how it, see how it shakes out at the end. So based on the uh, result of this, we're pretty sure already on the uh, top two qualifying positions for um, uh, for the finals but there's yeah still all to play for for the uh, for the remaining uh, uh, grids for the finals this afternoon absolutely and Bolton managed to get over the finish line with about a second or two to spare by the looks of things there because as you can see the leader is now on their final lap so South Wales last chance you want that podium position now or never that gap still hovering around half a second. It's you know, ebbing and flowing as you go go round uh, round the lap. Or the um, let's see if they go for a for a, a late lunge anywhere. They've comfortably yeah. got over 15, 16 seconds to their car behind, so uh, they could go for a full send up the inside somewhere. And uh, um, if, if if they don't pull it off, they're still comfortable in the 
in, uh, in fourth place. Being able to pick up the fourth. I've got a feeling Trinity St. David, they've got just enough breathing space now. It's just gone up to seven tenths of a second now, the gap. So that's just out of lunge territory now, really, isn't it? Yeah, that would be a very late, very extreme lunge and that would uh, likely result in either contact or uh, yeah, a serious off into the barrier. Unless uh, Trinity St. David make an error now in these last few corners, I think they've managed to hold on to the final podium position there. Uh, however, up in the front, we've got Bolton somewhere about to come and cross the finish line. Shall we go and uh, join them for the finish line, uh, Dan? Yes, let's go for that. So to confirm our race winner, uh, Bolton. So as we mentioned uh, previously, they're competing remotely from uh, their rig in their university, so we won't be able to interview them. And our NUST remote as well today, Monty? They are remote as well. Yes, they are racing live from Pakistan. So congratulations, guys. That was a, a very good result there for you as well. Um, uh, but to both of you teams, if you could reach out to me on Discord, because we would like to reach out, um, try and speak to you at some point during today's broadcast. So if you could both drop me a message on Discord, and we'll try and get you set up later. However, for those that are in the venue just now, I better go and find someone to interview, Dan. Thanks very much, Monty. So we'll exit the server whilst you go and work out who to uh, interview. That should be our uh, th third place finisher, Trinity uh, uh, St. David. So we're now halfway through our second round of qualifying. Two more heats left to go before we uh, break for lunch and come back for the finals uh, this afternoon. So coming up in this th third heat, we're expecting to have uh, University of Salford, University of uh, Hull and uh, Trinity College Dublin. So it should be a four car race for this next qualifying, uh, qualifying heat. Drivers are mid changeover uh, now. If we switch over on this mezzanine here at the Virtual Reality Racing Club, switching over drivers in a five minute changeover slot from from one heat to the um to the next i can see monty's wandering around looking for the uh <laughs> guy from the previous race i'll stop talking for the moment until i can see that monty's assembled and ready for the for the post-race interview whilst i'll get the server set up for the next race talk to you shortly So yeah, I think Monty's managed to track down the man for the post-race interview. Uh, over to you, Monty. To you. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, so, hello guys. Hope you enjoyed that race there. Uh, as we were saying, first and second place were uh, joining us remotely. So congratulations to you guys for uh, winning and coming in second that race. We will try and interview you guys later on. However, for those who are with us at Silverstone at the moment, I've tracked down third place, posi um, third place finisher from uh, Trinity St. David. It is Mr. James. Very good name, sir. Thank you very much. So is yours. Oh, thank you very much. Um, well done on that. Third place, that's... Um, between those two heats, that will hopefully get you somewhere high-ish up in the finals. There, how do you find? Uh, how did you find the race? So tell us about it. The race was, I say, it was a, a lot of fun. Say different track. Say the always the Italian F4 cars are brilliant to go around anyway. So uh, obviously didn't have quite have the pace of uh, was it Bolton and no. that's it. But um, say well done to the pair of them. But say fortunately they're not here to have this interview so I'm, I'm not too worried about taking their place for it so <laughs> well that, that's fair enough I'm, I'm sure you can enjoy the camera and break the fourth wall that way <laughs> no it's completely fine it's um but no no well done on there it seems like fairly solid racing is it you who's just doing the racing today then was there any other teammates uh, who'll be joining in for the finals uh no we've got um Blau, my teammate for uh, driver 31c for our team say so he's been the lion's share of our he's been the best driver for our season so far so absolutely say any congratulations to him any for any of our championship points really so <laughs> oh that's fair enough then so we're, we're expecting to see him in uh, for the finals then are we absolutely i'll say he's been practicing as hard as he can and so so have i of course so 
we all hope to get into probably fi fi finally whether results based or just on, on our luck shall we say well that's fair enough i mean even if you don't get into finals a remember first and second place do progress so there's always an opportunity to do a little bit of extra track time later in the day but otherwise i think that's everything for now we're going to head back over for heat three james thank you so much for your time thank you very much james good luck and uh, dan back to you sir uh, the James and James loving's over. The uh, <laughs> well, it's nearly as confusing as the uh, number of Dan Joneses we have at my uh, my workplace. But uh, yeah, great to uh, great to uh, hear some opinions from uh, on their race performance and uh, expected fortunes for uh, their finals later on this afternoon. We are starting to assemble the grid for our third uh, qualifying heat. So at the moment we've got three cars in on the server. We've got Trinity College Dublin, University of Hull and Salford. So I believe these are all teams where they have uh, more than one driver. So these are different drivers to those that we saw in uh, in round one of the qualifying heats in the uh, in the caterums. So past performance is not a predictor of uh, future performance as we say so uh, we'll have to wait and see how the relative pace shakes out between these different drivers we've got just over 2 minutes 40 on the countdown clock so I'm just going to mute out for a second whilst we get ready for the start of this race Just under a minute to go now to the start of this race. We were expecting it to be at least a four car race, but it looks like we've got some problems getting uh, Queen's University Belfast logged on to the uh, server. So for those of you experienced on uh, sim racing or yeah, uh, gaming in general, so there's um, yeah the, the driver details, it's uh, accessed on the server using your um, Steam ID. Uh, and there appears to be an issue on that side of the numbers not matching between what we have on the server versus what the guys are, uh, are trying to use. See if we can get that resolved and get Queens into this race, but looking at the countdown clock, that's unlikely. So it will be three car race between Trinity College Dublin, Hull and Salford. Red lights are on. And away we go. So Trinity College maintaining their position off the line close between the two cars behind let's ride on board with uh, Hull third, go third place going into the first corner we're going for a bit of a late break but similar late break from Salford ahead no contact between the cars so far I think we've got possible promise of a you know, nice close clean racing between all three I am tempting fate of the old commentator's curse for this one, but um, so that's hole through into 
second, Salford in the lead. See in the mirror behind Trinity College Dublin faster down the straights. They're attempting a late passing move down the outside. Flung out to dry there by, by Hull. So they now resume the chase of Salford ahead. So Wheata, this drive, the drive uh, for Salford, has won a couple of the, uh, if I recall correctly, I come the, a couple of the earlier rounds uh, from the online element of the series. So I know he's one of our faster drivers. Let's see whether Hull have got the pace to to stay and live with uh, with Salford. At the moment, looks like a couple of tens per corner or so. Well, no. Bringing it, bringing it back. So hopefully, we're on for some close racing still, and uh, not a procession. So as we're on board with Hull, gap down to half a second, half a second now. Even more on the brakes into the first corner. So let's see how this develops uh, over the lap. But very strong chance we could have a. Uh, opportunity to pass if not towards the end of this lap then uh, yeah on the fo on the following lap based on the uh, pace difference we're seeing not a great exit for Salford from that corner so defending to the uh, inside but Hull great at top speed at the end of the straight Salford late on the brakes trying to defend but a little bit too late and that left the door open for Hull to make it through into first position. So tables are turned, now it's for Salford to chase down chase down Hull and attempt that pass. We'll switch back to riding on board with Salford. It does look like our, our on-track action is going to be between uh, these two. They've already stretched a reasonable gap to the uh, guys from Trinity College Dublin behind. Mistake from Hull, that's let Salford uh, close up but not enough to complete complete the pass but that has closed the gap right down to uh, just a couple of tenths of a second between these two cars. We come to the end of another lap running down the start finish straight. Bit of weaving from Hull to try and break the toe. Salford deciding against the uh, the attempted late lunge, trying to get the good exit for this uh, next portion of the lap. This next left hand is a key one. Really sets your uh, yeah exit speed for down this uh, long long straight. Looking at the gap, so stretching between Hull and Salford. Close right down on right down on the brakes. Hole take it hole take into the grass creek. And Salford on the outside. I have to say it's been good clean racing between these two so far, so uh, close but no contact. It is neck and neck between these two as we come towards the final portion of the lap. Salford through on the inside. So on board with Hull as this uh, ding dong of a battle continues. So it's like Hull have got the better exit from the final corner, but they don't have the track position into the first corner. So despite that higher speed down the straight, Salford able to hold position in the first corner, but then Hull getting the better exit on the switchback, and that's Hull back through into first position.
So Salford attempted to pass up the uh, inside. Looks like that was successful. Then Hull coming back around uh, around the outside. They have the inside line for this right-hander. It's, um, it's a combination of this uh, car and track combination and the, the drivers we have in these cars. I think this has been the, the best best racing we've had so far um, in the in the qualifying heats so close and clean between uh, between the pair of them and I've got no idea how this is gonna gonna end I think it's a changing corner by corner yeah I fully agree with you on this one uh, one of those teams have more to lose than the other Salford have a championship to win Holford's Holford's no, no, no such thing as Holford's that's a shop <laughs> Hull, <laughs> Hull have um, pride to take with a win and uh, every time Salford make little errors like that um, Hull are going to go for it and they're going to I think drive a lot more aggressively in this because they just want to win this Salford they got a championship to win so they've got to be very very careful with this but they didn't have the best of first heat so they have to do well in this race to ensure that they're in finals A otherwise they may not make it through and may not get the biggest points so there's a lot of pressure on here for Salford but Hull, where have Hull gone? I think they've just fallen off the track there in the chicane. Yes, it looks like it. Uh, Hull have uh, just backed off. Salford have taken over the lead. So I think um, Hull must have gone wide into uh, that chicane before. Yeah, it looks like that. I'm not sure whether it was any uh, net code or it was in, in reality. But yes, yeah, so the, the gap on the, on the relative, it's still less than a tenth of a second and this wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling <laughs> between them uh, continues around on, on yet another lap. I think, as you mentioned there, the pressure on to, uh, to get the finish to... Oh, oh and just as we say that... Oh, so Salford have spun. That's them uh, probably now guaranteed a second. Hull, th well, that's it now. Easily five seconds ahead. So um, the race is for Hulls to lose. They, they're they just here just to get maximum pride. But uh, Salford, let's see if they can uh, capture anything back from there. But with only two minutes left, I think it's a tall order now, isn't it, Dan? Indeed, I think so. And I think we, uh, my, my mental math is not good enough to know where the, uh, these grid orders are going to shake out. And, of course, we've still got a, uh, a fourth and final heat uh, uh, to come through to, to set the grids for the finals. If, if Salford don't make it into the A finals, by default on the, um, from the qualifying heats, they do have the opportunity to progress up from whichever finals they started. So uh, we're running a, a bump up. Uh, results so the, the first and second place finisher from the final uh, do uh, um, then qualify for the for the following final at the at the back of the grid but the um, uh, not being in the a final from the start it just yeah puts you at the peril of that making that mistake or having a contact with someone in the other final so whilst the opportunity is there it's you, it's far from far from guaranteed of being able to uh, progress up to the a final yeah absolutely um as they call it, unnecessary pressure. Salford are here wanting to win a championship, not having to worry about uh, things like this. But um, it's not over to the fat lady sinks. And um, as Dan says, even if uh, they have to start in the B final, if they win that, they'll be back in the A final. And almost arguably, based on what Southampton were talking about, um, having exposure to these rigs, that may actually serve them better as they get a bit more track time and get a bit more familiar with these controls which um, looking at the last race given it was first and second by those remotely logging in I do suspect if there's a, a bit of logic to their whinging <laughs> 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 set me off there I think the um, <laughs> let, let's, uh, <laughs> uh, I won't make any comments about the tool behind the tool oh sorry I just did <laughs> <laughs> but the um, uh, I think the um, uh, there is there is an element of familiarization of uh, yeah, of, of being used to your, used to your own rig but the um, uh, the best drivers are able to adapt to yeah, as much as drivers can get into different cars and drive different cars very quickly within the matter of a couple of laps, I think yeah, the, the best drivers can adapt to uh, different rig hardware at the same, at the same rel relatively quickly. But um, who doesn't love a moan? Um, uh, any opportunity for the racing driver, random excuses button to uh, uh, to come out. But let's let's see how it shakes out over over the remainder of the heats in the finals. I think compared to the the heats for the finals, we've got progressively increasing uh, race length. That's going to give them the opportunity to get uh, settled into a steadier rhythm, but also going to give them you know, 
uh, more opportunities for the um, yeah, spinning out or the contact with the other cars and, and losing a great amount of lap time. So, uh, yeah, pros and cons for, for both there. More opportunities for excuses, exactly. That's so just what we're looking forward to there. But um, <laughs> jokes aside, Southampton, no, no serious dig at you. Honestly, you've been a wonderful uh, competitor so far this year. I'm just using my uh, dark sense of humour again here. But um, I, I have to say, we have such a wide variety of um, driver experience in the series this year. Some people have never touched uh, a simulator before, before the series began. And then we've got, on the other end of the spectrum, we've got esports racers. And then um, the majority, I guess you could say, standard deviation are somewhere between the two of them who make up the 95th percentile. Um, and it's been great to see particularly those with less experience, where in the first couple of rounds they were five seconds a lap slower than the leading drivers, much, much closer to their pace come the end of it. And uh, it's given us a great finale here. As uh, we've seen now that Hull have won. Salford, in theory, the, the championship contenders finishing second. It's not a guarantee now that um, the big four are going to win it in uh, any of these races. Oh, some oh, nice oh, smoke. Oh, oh, po Post-race celebratory um, uh, burnouts there. From <laughs> <this> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> or commiseratory burnouts, depending on... Uh, uh, depending how you look at it that, yeah. that was really good some nice graphics from a, a nine year old uh, simulation platform as well so uh, guys if, you, if you're looking for something with a good tyre smoke physics a set of courses your game I'm going to go and do some interviews now Dan <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a little bit thanks very much Monty so until yeah, until Salford made the mistake in that race, it was some great close racing um, b between the two of those. But um, yeah, cracked under pressure or not? Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get the view from from Hull shortly. I'm going to drop off commentary for a second whilst I start to get ready for our final uh, qualifying heat, and we'll hand over to Monty for the uh, post race interview shortly. Okay, so slight change in format from what we might be used to. We've decided to get our uh, race winner and second place uh, together for the interview on this one, so we can have a bit of a uh, uh, you know, discussion around the, the the battle that they had. Uh, over to you, Monty. 
Thank you, Dan. Yes, no, that, that was uh, by far the most entertaining battle we've uh, seen for the race, so, or for the lead so far uh, in today's racing. Hazem from uh, Hull and uh, Johnny from Salford. Congratulations, guys. That was very, very entertaining stuff. Commiserations for the spin, though, I have to say, Johnny, because we were hoping that would go straight to the line. Um, well done, though, guys. Hazem, I'm going to come to you first. That's a win. Well done. How do you feel? Yeah, absolutely. This race could have, done, could have went any other way. You know, if we continue to battle the entire lap, yeah, we, I think we overtook each other like four times each lap the entire race. Yeah, good job, man. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. No, it looked fantastic from the outside. So uh, w once you get a chance to look at it at YouTube, yeah, okay. then uh, yeah, do so. It was really good, uh, entertaining stuff there. Johnny, God damn it, man. <laughs> you guys have got a championship to win as well. We were talking yeah. about the, the pressure you guys must have been feeling from that. What was going through your mind at the time? Uh, at the time, I just wanted to try and pass Hazem. Uh, that's what you think about when you're in the rig. Um, it was a good, it was a good battle. Um, say, it was a, nothing better than uh, when you're sim racing to uh, get this kind of adrenaline rush and, and the fun as well. And obviously, it's good for uh, everyone who's watching. So, uh, no, it's uh, I'm I'm not happy about the spin, obviously, but um, still. It is what it is, and uh, we move on. No, 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 that's completely fair. I mean, you guys get to do battle again in the finals. Uh, I need to go and calculate during the lunch break uh, where you guys will be in the finals. Obviously, you're going into this with a championship to try and uh, steal away from Southampton. You're going in here with no worries about a championship. Um, how are you guys approaching this race? Is we doing anything cautious? Are we just going get out, yeeting it? We don't really need to, you know, worry about winning a championship. So we're going all out. We practiced a little bit, uh, worked on the setup, and we're really here just to enjoy and learn from this experience. It's really nice to actually meet everyone in person rather than just, you know, racing on, on the simulator. I love to always travel and, you know, uh, race against each other. Yeah, and uh, the build, the stuff you build from your experience here, is, you can take it to real life racing, which I really enjoy. Yeah, I agree with that. And Johnny, last word from you. How are you guys going to do for uh, the finals? Well, uh, hopefully we're going to go for the win. Obviously, we want as many points as possible, but um, I'm wary that uh, there's other teams around us who want to jump up and potentially take second. So uh, we're going to do as uh, best we can, hopefully uh, come out uh, on top. Very best of luck to you. Um, are you guys going to be racing in the finals or your teammates? Uh, I think I will be because uh, there are two finals, right? Uh, I'm not uh, sure. It depends, depends. Uh, One final if uh, mm. we'll see what happens on there. But uh, the, the main thing is for you to be doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'll be doing it. And then for you? Uh, we haven't decided that one yet. Um, to be uh, decided? Yeah, I, think, I imagine I would be in the car, but obviously I need to chat through first. Well, very best of luck, guys. Hope to see you guys back in the sim rigs later on today. Very good battling today, and uh, thank you very much. The audience did love that. Dan, back over to you for the last race of the heats. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was definitely the um, uh, most entertaining of the, of the heats we've had so far. And uh, yeah, I see the guys not wanting to uh, yeah, show their hand for what they're planning to do for the, for the finals uh, just yet. And we still need the result of this heat uh, four to uh, be able to crunch the numbers and work out the starting grid for our finals uh, this afternoon. Um, with just over a minute to go to the start of this race, um, we have UCL and Dundee with us already. But looking across, I can see uh, yeah, at least two other people uh, here in the room frantically logging on to try and uh, uh, spawn into the grid. So that's Portsmouth EV. Uh, they've just joined. And we should get at least one more car for this race. Still got 50 seconds to for them to get logged in. There we go, just in time. So that's Staffordshire spawning into the grid in the uh, second position. Twenty seconds to go to the race start. Let's try on board from uh, Portsmouth EV for the start of uh, this race. A little change from the footage we've seen so far. It's a clean getaway for all of our competitors. Run down to the first corner, drafting the cars ahead. That's an overtake for Portsmouth EV up into third. 
very close between Staffordshire and UCL ahead. UCL holding it into the uh, left-hander, balking Staffordshire slightly, and that's allowing Portsmouth EV to, to get a run. Switch back to the outside cameras. This really is close between the between the three cars. I think we might be in for a treat, Monty. I think so indeed. Uh, we've got no none of the championship contenders in this race, so they're all going for broke, and that's exactly what they've done, just going into that corner there. All three of them off the track, and it looks like UCO have still held on to that. Uh, Portsmouth EV in the Renault livery. There they are in third. Ooh, that little squabble there has actually allowed UCL to pull away. They've just gained a second on um, Staffordshire there. Uh, Portsmouth EV, good exit though. That's straight up into second, going into the back straight there as they approach the massively cambered corner, which I'm sure has a name, but I'm just going to call it the massively cambered corner. <laughs> Almost like the corner with no name, but Paul Freire at, at Spa. At the, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Go, get, go there, pitch your flag, Monty. Oh, was that you, contact you there? That I think there was contact like, yeah. between uh, Staffordshire and uh, Portsmouth. Uh, they've uh, disappeared. Damn. Well, that, that's um, that's our winner. from. Uh, they won their race in uh, Heat 1, so um, this was not what they needed uh, for Heat 2 because I'm sure they were hoping to be in the finals A as well. But um, it's the first of six, seven laps, so they've still got a bit of time to catch up. That has potentially scuppered that, but as we've seen in some of the earlier heats, you, you can get mistakes from the cars ahead that, that you know, allow you to, to close back some infeasibly large large gaps. But looks now like it's really between Staffordshire and Dundee for second and third, and UTL comfortably uh, in the lead. But uh, you know, as we've said and seen uh, already this morning, it could uh, yeah, change in a heartbeat. And so... We have got the number crunching to do over lunch to set the uh, grids for this afternoon. Um, you may have noticed we've got a slightly reduced number of competitors than we were expecting. So I think in the event format, we're planning to do finals F uh, onwards. Uh, I suspect that we'll be down to running a finals E uh, onwards. So um, we've been running slightly late uh, this morning. We intend to catch up that time uh, over lunch and start the finals on time this afternoon. Uh, after lunch but then if we're running uh, only the e-finals then we'll we'll cycle through at the expected rate and we'll uh, yeah we'll we'll finish slightly uh, earlier than the, the forecast five o'clock finish whilst i've been uh, discussing all that it's closed right back up between our second third and fourth place cars so less than half a second between staffordshire and dundee and uh portsmouth ev have yeah got that gap down immeasurably already so it's a uh, I think that escalated quickly, I think is the expression. <laughs> yes, that's uh, definitely escalated quickly. I'm sure Callum's uh, got the bit between his teeth now to um, try and make up for lost time. He's definitely the fastest by a long way there. I mean, they were doing 142s. Callum did a 138 uh, for Portsmouth EV there. Um, we've seen that Southampton have a first and a second. So actually, ooh, Portsmouth EV need is a first and a second, and that should hopefully give them a good chance of getting into finals A as well. If these two keep on squabbling, uh, squabbling like they do, Dundee and Staffordshire, that may give them the chance. It looks like a Dundee's made a big error there and through go both Staffordshire and Portsmouth EV. Oh, is he going to go for the double? He's getting greedy. He's going down the inside into the hairpin. He's making two places at the same time. Good stuff there. Yeah, two passes in uh, in one straight helps a little there by the by the mistake from Dundee. But um, oh, oh, nice try, Staffordshire. That that was um, not as good as your first attempt. So um, uh, Portsmouth EV gets a run away now, and Staffordshire fall back into the realm of Dundee. <laughs> so <laughs> we did say it could all change in a heartbeat, and um, <laughs> should, uh, sure, sure enough, it has. So so now the yeah between Dundee and Staffordshire. Looks like this could be close for uh, for the remaining remaining laps, but oh, I've give, given up trying to guess. <laughs> no, it's anyone's guess at this point now. So we're just going to enjoy the racing. Staffordshire back up to third, so they're in the final podium position. Um, I'm intrigued now to see what Callum can do because he's just pulled four seconds on them in the lap before. What is UCL's pace like? We're about to find as they go over the finish line now. UCL was a 140.9. Uh, Portsmouth EV, 138.7. Oh, 
So there's only a two-second gap there, so actually Portsmouth EV could be onto the back of UCL by the end of this lap. Yeah, so we can we can switch to riding on board with um, uh, Portsmouth EV and see if we can uh, yeah, actually visibly see that gap, gap reducing with a four-second per lap pace difference. If that what is genuine and not due to a mistake from UCL on that previous lap, then we uh, yeah we should see it coming down uh, yeah moment by moment. It's almost turning into two groups here because I'm just looking on the timing still. Dundee and Staffordshire, they're still swapping places as well. And less than a tenth between them. There could be another overtake going onto the straight coming into this hairpin here. So uh, we'll keep an eye on the um, timing charts there to see who can take uh, the last of the podium positions. Very, very, very creative racing lines from both UCL and Portsmouth EV. Portsmouth EV held that one. UCL made a huge error. Is this for the leads? Is he going to make it? down the inside nicely executed and after being uh, turfed off at the first lap that's Portsmouth EV back into the lead after just three laps so just over three and a half minutes to go for them to you know, not drop it and maintain that position so uh, if if they do come across the line in first place then that'll be a, f a first and a first it Sim will be yeah S -s -s similar to Bolton so yeah, yeah, in that situation how are we how are we setting the grids Monty remind me of the um, is it based on championship order uh, so we're going to be doing it on the fastest lap that they set in the first heat and then okay. the fastest lap in the second heat if in the unlikely event that they both manage to put the same fastest lap to the thousandth of a second in the uh, first heat that is <laughs> Yes, un unlikely, but possible. Anything's possible. Just remember Hareth 1997 in F1. Yeah, exactly. I was it. So was it the first three positions or four positions? It was first uh, three. First three, uh, all um, a 121.072. All three of them did the exact same time to the 1,000th. And, uh, yeah, implausible, but possible. We have, if we ever see that again, it's the, you know, the chances of it are so slim. It's probably because Michael Massey has returned to F1. Sorry, um, <laughs> put, putting my personal opinions aside. Um, no, joking, joking. Back to the racing anyway, Dan. So, um, yes, Portsmouth EV, they are um, pulling away with us now. That's a second gap they pulled away from a uh, UCL. Staffordshire and Dundee are still within a second of each other. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what they can do. A lot of teams seem to have been, just, well, ignoring the exit of that corner, really, haven't they? They've just redefined the circuit layout. Yes, I think the, uh, the the white lines really do define the uh, uh, the circuit limits. But as you say, being creative with well, what constitutes the the track limits. I think, yeah, in in some cases uh, there is definite time to be found. In other cases, it's you, you are better off staying to within the the confines of the confines of the circuit. And it's part of that pre-event practice is to learn uh, yeah, just how much of a liberty you can take with the track limits within the um, what's allowable with the software. Oh uh, no, meanwhile, on uh, board, that's Dundee uh, spinning off there. That'd be an example of what happens if you do abuse the track limits and go over the bouncy curves. <laughs> yes, uh, kept his foot in it. Near, I thought he had got away with that, but then it seemed to just grip up and launch him back the other way. So, um, bit of an unfortunate one there. Um, nose first into the wall. It's 50% damage we've got the servers at, so um, we've given them a little bit of um, grace shall we say. Uh, obviously, if that was real life, that probably would have been pit job, lost nose the lot, but uh, it looks like Dundee can fight for another day. Yeah, it looked uh, like a reasonably hard contact with the wall, so um, yeah, the front wing may not be hanging off, but the um, uh, but yeah, I would expect them to have a reduced downforce from the front, even at 50% damage, so I suspect that's taken the sting out of that battle for third and fourth, so let's move back forward and ride on board with uh, UCL, so the gap to Portsmouth ahead hovering around one to one and a half seconds so um, as we run down 30 seconds left on the on the race clock let's let's see what action we have left in store of the, the this final qualifying heat four comes to its conclusion absolutely it's been a, a very uh, very very competitive uh, bundle of heat so far actually and uh, it's been great fun to see uh, them all mixed um, because it's been randomly allocated, we've had some heats where perhaps there's one championship protagonist and um, less experienced racers, and it's kind of been a one-horse race. Um, we've had one heat where we had Cambridge, Southampton, and UE in there, so that was three championship protagonists right in there, so that was very competitive. And so essentially what was happening there was they were taking points off each other, which may jeopardise them getting into finals A. 
Then, of course, you've got Midthing. What are they doing? It's the final lap, guys, and they think the race is over. The race is not over yet, guys. You want to go and carry on moving? You want to carry on moving? Definitely want to carry on moving. They, they think the, uh, the race is over. It's not. It says final lap. It is over, though. They've finished. It is? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm blind then in that case. <laughs> I'm going to go to the podium. Um, the, the, um, yeah, there is a chequered flag there. My God, I'm so blind. Sorry, it's because it said final lap. I didn't see it saying race over. It was very, it <sighs> was very, very close, though, the, um, as, the, as they came around onto the, the start-finish straight. Um, it just clicked over onto the leader who's on the final lap. So we were, we were ah. the, the opportunity for one that final lap of battling was, was taken away from, from them. But the, uh, so winner of our final qualifying heat there, uh, Portsmouth EV. Second place to UCL, third place uh, Staffordshire and Dundee in in fourth place. So we'll um, we'll hand over to Monty shortly for the uh, post race interview with uh, with Callum from uh, University of Portsmouth, and then we'll be taking our lunch break before resuming for the final this afternoon. So it's been a pleasure to commentate on the qualifying heats for you uh, this morning. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the action and you find time in your schedule t today to, to tune back in for the finals this afternoon. Um, I'm just going to look it over my shoulder, seeing if they've made it over to the beanbag area yet. Not quite yet. Quite a lot of post-race discussion between the drivers themselves going on here yet. Yeah. Uh, um, Just hearing that the uh, reason we've, we're have lacking a couple of entrants this morning due to a clash with a uh, business presentation judging for their uh, uh, formula student or concept class uh, entries. So we will have a couple of teams joining the, uh, the back of the grid for the finals um, this afternoon. Uh, whilst that was just being discussed and agreed, it looks like Monty's nearly made it over to the beanbag area. So we'll be bringing you that final uh, post-race interview with uh, Portsmouth very shortly perfect timing they've just assembled themselves so over to you Monty thank you very much um, yes I've kind of calmed down after my James Allen moment there of not looking at what the screen was saying so I do apologize for that guys um, I am here with the Portsmouth EVs driver Callum yet again well done sir that's two race wins from uh, two heats that sets you up well for the final but it wasn't easy this time was it tell us what happened yeah it wasn't easy I, to be honest i didn't expect that win but uh yeah i got punted off on the first lap and uh, it was just a catch up from there um i knew i was faster than the guys ahead but it was just keeping the consistency and getting catching up without any mistakes and you did a very good job on that. We, uh, Dan and I were both admiring four seconds you pulled in on one lap and then two seconds on the lap afterwards. Uh, you, you were like a, a possessed man on a mission there. Did, did you feel in control of the car? or I mean, how did that all feel to you? Because it's completely different to the, the Catrum combination, isn't it? Yeah, it's a much more stable track, but also a much different track compared to a Snetterton. It's much more open and flat. Uh, the F4 is a very good car to use and it's quite stable in acceleration and I knew spots on the track where you could accelerate a little bit quicker than anyone else and just get a little bit more speed which caught me up faster than the rest. It paid off magnificently in there well done so as we say we now need to go and calculate uh, what where everyone is for the finals with two race wins I think you've probably put yourself in the best position possible to get into the A finals in there of course you're doing this all as a one-man show for the team so whatever happens that's the back of the grid for you sorry sir how are you feeling? How are you going to prep yourself up for this finals? I mean, I've started at back of grid for the other races, so it's just, again, it's keep it stable, keep it clean, and just go with it and have a bit of fun. Sounds like a good plan to me. Callum, well done. Thank you so much for your time. Um, 
Dan, I think it's time for a spot of lunch and a bit of number crunching. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Callum. Thank you.
Well, welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon of this, the Formula Student uh, Sim Racing Series. We are live here just outside Silverstone at the Virtual Reality Racing Club. That's VRRC. Definitely haven't got that acronym wrong earlier today. So, yes, uh, we are at their facilities today. It's a wonderful place. And as you can see here, we've got all our drivers lined up for the first of our finals this afternoon. I'll shortly be hopping onto the commentator's booth to uh, commentate on this race. Dan will be joining us again later on today. Otherwise, all you need to know is it's Mazda MX-5s. It's classic Monza. Expect a lot of slipstreaming and expect a lot of uh, competitive racing in here. I'm looking forward to this. Guys, you're looking forward to this? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Are you looking forward to this? Yeah. Much better. Right, okay. I'm going to head on over to the commentator's booth. So uh, back to you in the studio. I'll be back in the booth very, very shortly. Ah, there we are, nice and comfy in the commentator's chair, and we are all good to go. Ten seconds to go, the light's about to go. MX-5s at Monza 1966. This should be really, really great fun. Let's see what happens. And the, away they go. A great start, it looks like, there from Dundee. Staffordshire just as close off the line, and the five of them go uh, slipstreaming off into the Curva Grande. Of course, there are no chicanes in this um, historical version of Monza. So let's have a look and let's see uh, what happens. It is US, uh, that's um, South Wales into the lead. Someone on the grass. Oh, 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 that's tight. That's tight. They're trying to go five aside into Curva Grande. This is either going to work well. No, that was never going to end. Well, we've got two cars off. That's uh, Dundee. That's uh, Trinity College um, Dublin. What a shame. So the two of them are now going to have to work together to try and catch up to the leading three who are now pulling away after that uh, first piece of contact. So into the Lesbos for the first time. We have Staffordshire. Then it's uh, the University of South Wales. And then Vittoria, uh, Vittoria, the University of Victoria or um, Basque country, who are joining us. Unfortunately, they weren't able to join us for any of the heats. So it's great to see that the Spanish team have been able to join us here for the finals. Obviously, they started at the back of the grid. And away we go. So through the bridge, under the old banking, and then into the Ascari curve. No chicane here, guys. Let's follow behind with Vittoria for this one. And let's see what it looks like. It's all about bump drafting. It's all about some um, slipstreaming here. 15 minute race. This is the first of, um, ooh, I reckon we're going to get about seven or eight laps of racing into this one, guys. So uh, this should be really good fun. South Wales going into the lead as we head into the Parabolica. We've got slow cars and a lot of slipstreaming. Nicely held, though, by Staffordshire, hanging it around the outside. South Wales, they're on the grass on the inside there. Tucking it in the inside. Now, what can Victoria do? Can ooh, Staffordshire cutting it? Going to try and go three aside here. I think this is going to be really good fun as um, this race goes on. Let's go back on an outside view here. Right. Victoria and Staffordshire, they're both battling each other. South Wales, can they hold on? 
No chicanes. This is about where the first chicane should be, guys. It's 1966 as far as our virtual world is concerned here. Into the Curva Grande for the second time. Round the outside goes Vittoria into the, lead, into the lead. Very, very nicely done. Now it's the right sweeper into the left sweeper and then into the two Lesmos. So as all this action is going on, we can see Dundee in fourth. They're in a bit of a lonesome uh, place now. 11 seconds behind the leaders. And then we've got Trinity College uh, Dublin in fifth. 15 seconds behind the leaders. If them two can um, catch up to each other, perhaps they can work together, use that slipstream and start catching up to the leading pack here. It really does become a slipstream fest here and that is what's going to win you the race. Leading it just now, not going to make a hoot of difference. You've got to be in it to win it and you've either got to be working with a slipstream to break away at the end because if you try and take the lead now, they're just going to catch you up because they're just sitting in that hole in the air that uh, you've just created by punching into them like this. And it's all gone a little bit steady now. So first lap, all calm down. Coming down to the Parabolica for the second time. Victoria is still leading from Staffordshire and the University of South Wales. So... As it's all calmed down, let's talk about the format for this afternoon. So we were originally scheduled to have six finals. We were originally supposed to be at Brands Hatch for the F finals. Uh, we'd be doing Brands Hatch and Catrims. <coughs> Unfortunately, because we've had so many university teams drop out at last minute, fairly understandable. Their main priority is Formula Student proper. So they have... Um, basically not turned up that's fair enough that's where the real points are so i can understand but we do hope to see them in here again for the next season so that meant we could skip onto the e-finals but because of how many universities have not turned up today that meant we had to skip the e-finals which was a shame because I, I was looking forward to the clears at manicure so we're straight into the d finals we're still on schedule more or less so uh, everything which you see in the timing sheets is still relevant at the moment uh, and as you can see now, we've got Victoria and Staffordshire breaking away from the University of South Wales. And now that they're more than a second behind, it will be interesting to see if they can catch up. The only hope is that these two hold each other up through the Parabol uh, not Parabolica, through the Lesmo section now. And that allows uh, the University of South Wales to catch up again. But at the moment, it looks like they're beginning to pull away. So this is the D finals We're with the MX-5s. We've traveled back to 1966 to give you this glorious slipstream fest around the classic circuit. The top two from this race will be progressing onto the back of the grid for the C finals. The combination for there will be revisiting the Formula 4 Tatus cars once more. But this time we're traveling over to America at Long Beach for there. Then for the B finals, with, of course, the winner and the runner-up from C finals progressing to B finals. They'll be joining the remaining races there where they will uh, be uh, sampling some Australian V8 cars around uh, Eastern Creek Raceway or Sydney Motorsports Park, as it's now known, uh, now known as Bruce. And then the best two of those will join into the A finals, the grand finals, where we will be doing the GT3 cars around Silverstone for our grand final of round eight and the last race of this series. Now, whilst I've been blithering away there, I've realised South, uh, South Wales managed to get back into second, and actually now into the lead with a bit of contact with Staffordshire. So, um, enough of me talking about the format. Let's get back to the racing itself now, because um, somewhere I've missed a really good overtake. We've got a new leader, and Victoria, who were um, leading it just a lap ago, are now down in third position and almost two seconds behind, so I definitely missed something really uh, big there. But we're back for the live and for the good stuff now. South Wales and Staffordshire. My goodness. Side by side, through the right and the left, they're still bouncing off each other. They're lucky they're not taking each other out here, but they're not leaving each other any uh, space at all. But uh, South Wales have the inside. They have the inside for the first of the Lesmos. Coming into the second Lesmos then, look at that, Staffordshire right on their Jaxi. He's run wide, he's smacked the wall, he's going to lose a lot of time because of that now. Half a second behind, so that gives us South Wales a little bit of breathing space as they approach the Ascari curve going into the Parabolica. All that momentum's gone now for a Staffordshire, but it now means we basically got the top three a second apart. So they're all just going to be in each other's slipstream. 
Staffordshire and Victoria can keep it to about eight tenths of a second, they'll start clawing back in. And we're only halfway through this race, guys, so um, plenty of opportunities left to get that lead. Plenty more opportunities to make, um, well, more mistakes. Little bit of dead radio there, just let you guys enjoy the uh, sound of an MX-5 at full chat. Rating around a circuit which it would never have known about because, well, the MX-5s only existed in the 80s. So, um, yeah, there we are. We've got into a little bit of a lull, as you can see, so uh, South Wales seem to have this under control. If they can keep the gap over a second, they're out of that slipstream, they should be fine then. But, um... We'll see if they go and bounce off the walls on the second Lesmo this time round. So it does seem like that um, South Wales are beginning to pull away now. Perhaps Staffordshire picked up a bit of damage. Perhaps that's what happened to uh, Victoria as well, though. They must have bounced off a wall. The two of them have sustained some damage, and they both do seem to be losing some time now because the gaps are opening up. Not quite the slipstream fest we were envisioning, but it definitely did work well for the first couple of laps. So if they can keep it up like this, then I'm sure we're going to have lots of laughs later on. It's fun, actually, but just being in the commentating booth here, so I just glanced to my left, and just as I say that, there goes the leader. Off, off into the bank in Parabolica, and there we go. So, um, I wasn't lying. There was plenty of action still to come. I just wasn't expecting it to be like that. So there we are. The leader has uh, thrown it away. Now seven, eight seconds behind the leaders. We now have a new leader, Staffordshire, back with Victoria second. And with that, Staffordshire and Victoria are now going to progress into final C. And unless something else happens to them, then South Wales have now lost their opportunity to progress into Final C with a chance of making the Ultimate A Finals. Oh, what an unexpected development that was. Just over a second gap between them, then. So, so this is going to be very, very interesting to see, um, and, and to see if we can. Um, well, can Staffordshire now hold on to it? Looking at the state of their car, that left side looks completely mullered. So, um, I, I'm not really hoping on them to have a good thing. Uh, they, 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 they must be damaged to that car because look at Victoria. They're really going for it now. They're straight out of there. Oh, contact again. Right, there we are. So Staffordshire definitely nursing a, da uh, a damaged car there because they were losing so much time through uh, the two Lesbos there. And with that, Victoria going to the lead. Oh, well, that's just what we need. So I'm just having a check on YouTube's comments now to see what's going on. Whilst, of course, looking at the uh, the action, uh, I will check the comments again in a second because I think Staffordshire are going to take the lead and are they going to be able to hold it on the outside coming into the Parabolica? Three minutes left, so I suspect we've got two more laps to go. There's a bit of contact there. They're both off. All right, who's going to get back first? Victoria's back on the track first, but Staffordshire's got the momentum. They've held the momentum. They've held the lead. And off they go with a two and a half second gap now. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, right, okay. So, two laps to go. Staffordshire in the lead. Victoria second. Both of them have been off. South Wales have now had their blessing. So they're now back into the mix of things. Three and a half seconds behind the leader. A second behind second place. They've got that slipstream. Now if they work together, they can go and nab that victory back off Staffordshire. Remember, it's only the top two who will go through to the finals here, uh, into final C. I, I beg your pardon. So, 
Staffordshire, if they can hold this gap, they're through. Who's going to be second through? This is the big question now. Unfortunately, Dundee and uh, Trinity College of uh, Dundee, uh, Dundee at all, of Dublin, they're too far behind now, I'm afraid. So uh, 26 seconds behind the leader for uh, College of Dublin and uh, Dundee 12 seconds behind. So uh, it's a shame with all that argy-bargy. If they were a little bit closer, that could have uh, been their opportunity to get back into the mix of things. We're going to go and follow... Yeah, let's go on board with South Wales then. He's looking at these two cars going for it. Staffordshire definitely have a problem because they've lost again a second and a half through the Lesmos. Victoria back on their side. Going down the inside as they head into the Ascari curve. 1 minute 55 seems to be the fastest lap at the moment. So... Um, we're definitely heading on to our final lap now. Victoria back into the lead. Staffordshire in second. Can they hold on to it? Can South Wales cause an upset again? I'm looking to the left, and you can see in the little corner shots as well in your bottom right there just how much they're focusing. And I'm telling you now, they are sweating buckets because it is so hot in here. So um, maximum concentration going on. Victoria's gone wide into there. Staffordshire going to give it a try. They're going to be neck and neck. We're in the perfect view here with uh, South Wales watching this all. All they need is a little bit of contact as we come into the last lap. And they'll be there to capitalise on their punishment. Just quickly answering the questions on YouTube. So it is paddle shifts they're running. There are clutches. So if there's a lockup of the re rear wheels, it's because they haven't synchronised their um, throttle blips correctly. But enough about the uh, technicalities. Back to the race because it's the last lap. Side by side, coming into the Curva Grande, it's Staffordshire and Victoria. Now, if the two of them stop battling, they can settle for the first two and both progress into the final C. Will they do that? Will they work together? Or are they going to squabble and allow a South Wales to catch up onto them? Staffordshire's back into the lead, going into the Lesmos, but we've seen how slow they are going through there. Is this the chance that South Wales needs to pull up beside them? Coming through the Ascari, the first one that's close, it's a second behind. Another tenth, another tenth, and you'll start feeling the benefit of that draft. Staffordshire have gone wide. They've both defended each other on the inside. That's uh, given enough for South um, Wales to pull into the, the slipstream there. There we are, it's half a second. They're going to pull. We're going to stay on board with them. And watch them, they're just pulling in, 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 Victoria and Staffordshire, they're going to stay side by side. The only thing they can do now to stop uh, South Wales from getting beside them is to block the track. Oh, this is going to be close, coming into the final corner, they're side by side with another car rapidly approaching them behind. This is going to be a drag to the finish, guys, to see who's going to make it into final C. Who's your money on? Staffordshire's holding it. They're keeping the momentum, but he's run wide, he's hit the grass. Oh no! Staffordshire's dropped out the last corner. Victoria, they're going to get away with the lead there, I think. South uh, Wales, they've picked up second. Can Staffordshire do anything about it? Nope. That's it. That's it all done, guys. Victoria have won. Finals D. South Wales have got into second. Staffordshire. Commiserations, guys. That was amazing racing. But unfortunately, that's it for Staffordshire, for Dundee, and for Trinity College Dublin. Oh, Victoria. Their first race of the day, and they've won it. Amazing uh, going there, guys. And University of South Wales. First and second for them. They're going to be progressing into finals C now. We're going to swap around the drivers now in uh, the paddock here, get the next drivers in. I'm going to go and interview uh, the drivers there. That was amazing racing to watch. Um, yeah, let's uh, go and enjoy some shots of the uh, studio for a couple of minutes whilst I go and uh, get set up on the interviewing panel. Be right back, guys.
So welcome. So welcome back guys, uh, we're about to go and do the interview shortly. I'm going to stay in the commentators booth and we're going to hand this over to Rich, the owner of the Virtual Reality Racing Club. Rich, over to you sir. Classic Monza and here's our uh, first place. Uh, how did the race go for you? It was very intense racing. Um, I didn't know where to go many, many of the times. I had these guys just so much close to me. And well, um, just trying to st stick to the racing line and get this slipstream slip to, to catch these guys. So. That's interesting actually. How did you find the tr car and track combination? I thought it was going to be actually boring because I tried it uh, at my home. It was just flat out. But now with the slipstream and I real, real people, it was much, much more fun. Uh, good. Well, congratulations. And how did you find the simulator? It was amazing. Uh, I find the such, such a smooth steering compared to mine at home. And um, the travel range from the accelerator is so much longer than mine. Yeah, good. it was good to modulate. Good to modulate. Okay, well, congratulations. So second place. How did the race go for you? Uh, it, it went well. I got to the lead and then unfortunately lost it on the final corner, but managed to come back and take second. Okay, and which which part of the race did you uh, find the most difficult? Um, Probably just getting through these guys. These guys are these guys are so good. Challenging, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very. Well, congratulations, well done. And then over to our third place guy. How was the race for you? Did you enjoy it? Very fun. Very much enjoyed it. Getting some wheel to wheel action as well. Very good. And how did you find the sim? Oh, amazing. As you said earlier, just the steering, the pedals. It all just felt very comfortable and easy to use. Cool. Okay. Well, congratulations, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Rich. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, so we are just getting the drivers uh, put into their rigs at the moment. So there's a seven-minute break. We will be uh, starting the races again at f five minutes past three for the beginning of Final C. We will look forward to seeing you very, very shortly.
So, welcome back, guys. Here we are for Final C. Welcome to Long Beach, California. Yeah, uh, we're with the uh, Formula 4 cars at the moment, so we've got a full grid of six cars. Lights are going off. We're good to go for the race. Here we go. There we go. Nice start from everyone there. Nice guess away. No, no one... Uh, no, that's a lie. Uh, UCL have been left at the grid. I tell a complete lie there. However, focusing on the front as we head down the boulevard into the first turn. UWE at the lead, but it's um, Trinity St. David on the inside. UWE very early on the brakes. Oh, God, and they've all come flying off at the first corner. Fantastic. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. So... <laughs> After all of that, they've all gone straight on. All right, they're, they're back online now. They're, they're all back on the track now. So they've gone through the fountain. <laughs> and more contact behind. Oh, jeez. Right, okay. So we've got Trinity St. David, it looks like, maybe leading? No, it's showing them at the lead for the timing for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. We're going to have to... There we go. Right, the timings have caught up with what's going on there. Okay, so we have Victoria leading. My goodness, after all that. So it's Victoria leading from the University of South Wales. So the two people who progressed from Finals D, they're straight into first and second. And they're ready to go and uh, progress straight into Finals B if they can do this. Trinity St. David's, they're in third. Championship contenders, UWE, University of um, West England. They're down to fourth now. What's going on? This is not what they would have been hoping for. UCL are in fifth. And Harriet Watts are... Um, uh, um, lost. So uh, a minute behind the rest of the leaders. Okay, right. So there we are. So uh, we will see what sort of progress they can make. That's a bit of shame for them. They've got some real big damage to the back right of the, their car. That back right wheel is looking really wonky. So that is a shame. I'm going to look at the leaders, though, because Victoria and the University of South Wales are keeping it really close, a second within each other. My goodness, I've never seen a start to a race like that. And it's Sod's Law. Oh, and that's South Wales going straight on. Oh, they've held on to it. They've held on to it. Okay, but that's allowed Trinity St. David to move on to the back of them. So this is for the last of the positions to progress into Finals B. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so much action the first two laps. I'm sure Dan's going to be kicking himself that he's not here to enjoy all these racing. Oh, all this uh, calamity. It um, always seems to happen once he goes off to do some other Formula student work as the humble chief judge of the IMEC E. Oh, right. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to catch my breath back. Um, you know, asthmatic, get the old inhaler out. <laughs> ah, much better. Right. Ready to commentate again. So, we have Victoria in the lead. Trinity, St. David in second. Um, South Wales are down to third now, so something has happened there. That's dropped them down, so they must have had another incident. So, okay, right, so uh, it's all gone topsy-turvy, but fair play, it's uh, Victoria. Victoria, the, the Basque country, as they call themselves. They're still leading this. This is amazing driving from them. We, we, we've seen they've been very competitive in the previous rounds, but um, they weren't able to take part in the heats this morning. So we were like, well, you've got your work cut out, having to start from the very last heat. And look at them. They've rocked up. They've won the first race. They're already five seconds ahead as we start the third lap in the race that they progressed to. And, well, commentators curse here, but they're on course for going straight into finals B at this rate. Incredible. Trinity St. David, there they are. They're in second, five seconds behind the leaders, but they're three seconds ahead of the University of South Wales now in third. Last of the podium uh, positions, but that's not going to get them through into final B. University of West England, UWE, or UE, as you'll hear them uh, be nicknamed later on in uh, the weekend uh, when we go and do the Formula Student proper at the Silverstone track. Look at them, they're in fourth position at the moment. They're a championship protagonist. Um, and uh, it looks like they're going to be um, out in final C and score very, very poorly. So there goes their chances of being able to uh, win the championship in season one of this, uh, <sighs> frankly, incredible series it's been to, to watch all the university students going for it, learning how to set up the car. For some of them, they're brand new to racing. They're clipping the wall there again, there, Mr. Bell, So um, from UE. So he's got away with it that time, though. So um, nice rearward shots. We can see the wheels are all still pointing in the, the same direction. So um, that's fine. That's all good. 
Let's have a look. We've got UCL there. They are in fifth, but they're 45 seconds behind the leaders now. So um, the servers have been open for all the drivers to do practice in the weeks counting up to this. So um, I think looking at what happened going into turn one, we can see how much practice people have been doing um, for this combination. Oh, five point turn now for UCL there. Uh, they avoided the wall though, so that's oh, it was a three-point turn. Okay, so that, that's fine. We'll, we'll give them five points for that. Very good. Uh, and Harriet Watts making up the back in sixth position there. Um, good grief, a minute and 15 seconds behind. Uh, is that Victoria behind them? That's Victoria behind them, so it looks like they're going to be lapped. Oh, good, goodness gracious me. I was expecting um, fireworks here. wasn't quite expecting it to be um, on uh, this magnitude, but... Uh, what an entertaining race this has been so far on a classic, classic racing circuit. The Grand Prix of Long Beach has been well, it's been a, a factor of California since 1976. First with the Formula One franchise uh, fraternity coming here. Then, of course, uh, IndyCar and Karts took over it. And uh, it's just a staple diet now um, of uh, their calendar. Um, fantastic circuit. They keep on changing the layout every 15 years using different parts of uh, the track, different roads, fantastic, great entertainment. Um, and that is Harriet Watts getting well out of the way of Victoria, letting them uh, just overtake them. They're enjoying this. They're just doing hot lap after hot lap now, and it's looking wonderful for them. Um, what an incredible display of domination this is from a Victoria so far. With eight minutes left to go, can they hold on to this? And, um, yeah, can, can they... Uh, Make it two wins out of two. Further down the field, so here we are. We've still got uh, Car 31, uh, Trinity St. David. They are in second position. So at the moment, they are going to be the second team to graduate into the finals B. Uh, however, don't scout on South Wales. Um, car number 32, so they did progress from D to C. They will need a bit of help in the form of someone spinning in front of them to make it through to finals B but um, for our newcomers who joined only at the end of the season so they've not done the full season it's been cracking to see how they've been doing so far this series and uh, we can't wait to see them uh, do the full series next year and uh, hopefully make a good crack of the championship because there is some raw pace there if they can get some time together to do a bit more of the practice and uh, yeah just commit to a full season there however as much as they're trying to chase down second at the moment Championship protagonist, uh, University of West England. There they are in fourth in the final C. Um, yeah, they're, they're, um, their season's just... They've gone off to such a great start. And just in the second half of the season, it's just started to go downhill for them. They've lost the momentum. They've still had the points uh, on the drop scores to make a real whack of it uh, in the championship and still mathematically at least had a chance of winning the championship but with them down in final C at the moment and with no way of progressing into B and A as things stand um, I think it's time for their championship to finish there goes South Wales into the wall that's UWE into third now if that happens to uh, one of the cars in front of them maybe they will be able to capitalise on finals B Still six minutes to go, guys, so uh, that's a fair bit of racing. Which, okay, it's only six minutes, but on a street circuit like this, that's a big variety. A lot of things can go wrong. Out of the final uh, hairpin, back onto Shoreline Drive. Can't really call it a start-finish straight, because well, you can see it's a curved right, isn't it? So, uh, And just on the other side of those grandstands, are uh, the ports of uh, Long Beach in real life obviously not here this is a virtual world but that's where all the cruise ships uh, would be uh, based as well so uh, if you ever fancy to cruise out of California this is a place to go I would recommend going to go and watch the uh, IndyCar first and hop on your cruise ship afterwards mm, sounds like bliss to me that and I know my mother is watching the stream at the moment so hello Joanna uh, how does that suggestion sound to you Get the family over to California and we'll go and do uh, a cruise through the Pacific instead to Hawaii. Perfect. <laughs> anyway, enough uh, naming and shaming there. Back to the leader, Victoria. My goodness, look at them. Ten seconds ahead of second place. Now, fifth place, UCO. They're one minute 15 behind, so that's them just into the front of the shop there. So uh, could they go and lap a second car on their way to winning this race? 
been an amazing performance from them so far, it has to be said. And I think we're going to be seeing Rich interviewing them again uh, after this race as things stand at the moment. It really has been an impressive, dominating display from them. So let's go and ride on board in the driver's view. Here we are, off shoreline drive into the first proper turn one where they all went straight on before. Now around the fountain. Single file through here, you're suicide if you try and uh, overtake. Out of there, turn right. Keep it to the left hand side because there's another right hand kink there. Nicely done. Using all the road, moving back to the right hand side now as we're now going to turn left down the next junction. Now this is where the old Grand Prix circuit would used to go straight on up the hill there. But, um, and then there'd be like a couple figure of speech ramps. But we're going to turn right, we're going to go inside the mall here, underneath the bridges down this drive instead and then we will rejoin the Grand Prix circuit which would have come out just outside these flats on the left here downhill ramp there so they're gonna kink it right here into the kind of big car park section long left hand section going on and then before you know it straight into the hairpin and we're back onto shoreline drive and that's a lap of Long Beach done guys four minutes to go a couple of laps left I would say of this race Victoria it's theirs to lose as far as I'm concerned just now, so we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, Trinity St. David on board with them in their wonderfully purple car. White, purple and black. Oh, and some blue on the front there, I do apologise. That's a nice livery, isn't it? Um, not as nice as my uh, JJ Racing pink cars, of course, but uh, it's a close second. So there they are, they're in second position. As things stand, they are going to progress into finals B as well. Um... Third position is Mr. Bell from uh, UWE. We have to see if they can. Uh, if there's misfortune in front of them, they could be close enough to capitalise on it and get into finals B. But as things stand, this is the end of their championship run. University of uh, South Wales, there they are in fourth, still keeping um, West England honest. But looking at that onboard action, I'm just going to go back to that onboard because look at that, he's driving. Down a straight with the wheel pointing left, so there's definitely some damage to the front of the car, some suspension damage there, so no wonder he is uh, struggling for pace now. Um, and in all of that, we've missed fifth position, UCL. Um, well done for not doing a five-point turn that time, but uh, we've missed in all of that, Victoria overtaking, or lapping I should say, fifth place. Um, so that's one less lap at least for UCL to do at the moment. And then rounding up the back there is Harriet Watts after whatever happened in the first lap there. And they lost a minute on the first lap with everything going on. Um, it was an absolute great shame for them. And um, yeah, no, uh, we hope to see them back again next year because they've been very, very competitive. Uh, they put a lot of preparation into their events as well. Uh, a very competitive team. And um, with a bit more luck next year, there's no reason why... We can't expect to see them battling for the championship either. Now, South Wales have ended up behind them. What's going on? He seems to have some serious damage going on now because he's really struggling to turn right there. Um, it would appear that Harriet Watts have managed to get in between University of West England and the University of South Wales through all this kerfuffle. So, uh, yeah, things have just kind of settled down a lot in this race, um, which is a bit of a shame after well, how fun that first lap was. I completely lost it there. But, um, yeah, no, it, it looks like um, a bit status quo now. Here comes uh, Victoria starting their last la lap now, I suspect. We've got 1 minute 15 left on the counter. They're doing 1 minute 20, so uh, I'd be surprised if we do an extra lap after this. Um, yeah, yeah flawless drive from them there they were the first to quickly pick up on the, the the first corner calamities got back on the track straight away in the lead and um they've just not looked back since trinity st david here they come around the uh, fountain for hopefully the last time we expect it to be they're there in second place so they as things stand will be taking the uh, second of the positions of the B final. So as a reminder, guys, the uh, first two from this race will be put onto the back of the grid for the B finals. Join them in that combination, which are the Australian V8s, the Ford versus uh, Holden showdown. 
at uh, Eastern Creek Raceway. That should be really great fun. Um, so they'll be at the back of the grid for that. And, well, let's see how far Victoria can get up. <laughs> As things stand at the moment, um, they've got great pace. So we'll have to see what practice they put in for the other events. That's enough of uh, my talking. Out of the last corner for the last time. Is this the last lap? Yes, it is. Lead on the final lap. Here comes Victoria over the chequered flag. And that is them finished. Congratulations to Victoria for winning final C as well as finals D. Here comes Trinity St. David out of the last corner now. So here they are coming over the line. That's them through to finals B. Congratulations, guys. Commiserations then to our final four runners. Here comes UWE coming over the finish line to take third. That will be them locked into their final position of round eight and they'll get the respective championship points from there. Unfortunately, it means mathematically that's them out of the championship now as uh, Cambridge, Salford and um, Southampton are yet to do their races. But from here on now, they will be scoring more points. So mathematically, at least, that's them out of the title. University of South Wales, that's them in fourth position there. University College London or UCL in fifth and Harriet Watts I'm sure are going to be very disappointed after that, that first lap uh, carnage there they were definitely hoping for much more out of that sixth position rounding out our final C and so with that guys we are just going to take a break for a couple minutes we're going to get the interviews all prepped up we'll hand it over to Rich who will probably be doing another interview for us and then um, we'll see what the drivers thought of that final C race be right back. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that race. That was really good entertainment. So we've got our top two with us. Rich is ready to interview them. Rich, over to you now. Okay, welcome back. And uh, welcome back to our uh, first and second place. Well done. Well, it seems like deja vu. That's two wins on the trot. How did that go for you? Well, I'm really comfortable with the, with that track. And I found it very comfortable in the, in the sim. So everything went well. Well, the, best, the first accident in the first corner... I was a bit confused about what happened, but then I just stayed focused and I finished the race. So you managed to monopolize on the accident then, push your way through. And how did you feel after that? Did you keep your eyes in the mirrors? Um, at first, yes, because I did two mistakes in the first lap. And the guys behind, the second and third, were, were close enough. But then I saw I had more, more pace than them and just kept, kept going. Well, well done, well done, mate. Two wins on the trot. So, uh, as a congratulations, is there anybody you want to do a shout out to? 
Um, a shout out to the team in the in the pit. Um, I know you're there watching, and I'll try my best in the next round. Well done, congratulations. So, second place. How was the race for you? Hectic, <laughs> especially that first corner. Say, so started second, going going through there, but uh, uh, I was I was quite lucky going because I went straight on for the first corner, but I was able to do you know the Seb Vettel just sp spin turned it out of there. Luckily, I say avoid collisions with cars around me. Say if I had any damage, now I wouldn't have been as confident. But thankfully, say pushed on, had, didn't have any damage throughout the race. And as soon as I saw the car behind was ten seconds behind, I knew oh, okay, I can I can relax a bit. Well, you seem to have a lot of confidence there, comparing yourself to Seb Vettel. So well done, congratulations, guys. Is there anybody you want to do a, a shout out to? Uh, shout out to my brother. I know he's watching, Golden Child. Uh, but uh, uh, say mum, dad, you know, basic stuff. <laughs> of course. Mum, dad, the basics. Okay. Well, well done, guys. Congratulations. And we'll go back to some more racing.
Welcome back guys for finals B. We've got 30 seconds to go. We have virtually traveled across the Pacific to Australia now to Eastern Creek Raceway or Sydney Motorsport Park as it's now known as. For this combination we have um, this track and the drivers have a choice of Holden or Ford. Yes it's that old cliche and um, we're on to the finals B. It's a 20 minute race. Lights are about to come on. Let's see what happens here. We've got Salford and Portsmouth at the front. Are they going to stay there? Is it going to be carnage? We'll find out now. Off they go. Great start. They've all made it off the line this time, so that's a good start. Now, for those that don't know Eastern uh, Creek, it's a flat-out left-hander first into a hairpin. And it looks like... Oh, they've backed off. They're going sliding into this one. Down into the hairpin they come, and they're on the grass three side. Oh, jeez! And this happens again, and every single one of them have gone flying on, apart from... Nust, our uh, online racers, Nust, they've gone str They're the only one that's made the first corner. Amazing. Victoria, oh, I don't believe it. Victoria, they're in second. So amazing. Cambridge, one of the championship protagonists, they're in third. Salford, the other championship protagonists, are in fourth. So as it stands at the moment, this is Southampton's to win. Unless they can get themselves back into a top two shootout. Oh, I can't believe that. Trinity St. David, they're right behind them in fifth. And there's Portsmouth in sixth. They've eventually managed to get themselves out of uh, the gravel trap. And uh, they're now lapping at the same rate as everyone else. Can they do anything from this? They're 20 seconds behind the leader. Um, something's happened to us. They are just coming through the last hairpin now. Victoria, there they are, second. Cambridge third, Trinity St. David fourth, Southwood down to fifth now. Oh, God. Right, okay, what are they going to be able to do for their championship aspirations from this? Oh, well, it's 20 minutes to go, guys. So it's a 20-minute race. There's a lot of uh, opportunities for them to catch up. Um, I've been told by every single one of them, and you can see it, actually, not one of them has practiced this combination. So um, whilst they're all struggling, there's Nust coming around the first turn. They've completed their first lap. Are they going to break in time for the corner? Look at those tyre marks. Oh, they all just run straight on there. We've got to get a mean picture or a clip of that, surely, guys. Anyone online, come on. You've got to get some clips for me on that one. That was beautiful. Okay, Nust, they're in the first. Victoria, I don't believe it. They're still second. They've done none, none of the races this morning. They've just rocked up and they put themselves into a top two for every single final so far. So the cheeky so-and-sos could be going into finals, A. Eh? What a recovery drive those guys have had. Although not with driving like that. Big understeer moment there. That's going to give Cambridge the chance to catch up onto them. And here they go. Uh, never mind. Cambridge have gone straight on. So, um... Victoria holds on to second. Cambridge, Alex Wilkinson, their one driver entry. Okay, so he's got it all to do again. Let's see if he can catch up from there. Trinity St. David, there he is. Uh, Mr. Green in the uh, Holden. Very tight and twisty section here. It's basically three different layouts combined together. This is what uh, Eastern Creek or Sydney motorsports park is all about really they've got three different layouts and then you put them together and you have this one mega layout where um oh that's cambridge off again right into the path of trinity st david big tank slapper going onto the main straight down the hill can trinity st david do anything about that i think they can they've got the inside line all the way down the hill now it's a drag to the start line into turn one you saw that it's a flat out left hander what can they do really tight line can they hold it around the inside Cambridge have held it on the outside. And they've re-overtaken. What an amazing move that was. Oh, completely locking up, though, for this corner. They've just about made it. Side by side out the corner again. Cambridge hold on to thirds. Oh, what cracking racing this is. Let's ride... Uh, let's follow Trinity St. David now in fourth position. Watch them as they go now onto uh, the small of the two layouts. So they flick it right, they flick it left. Now, this club circuit has its own start line here. A little pith exit on the right hand side there. So it's very tight and twisty. It's almost like being on two completely different circuits here. So here they are now through the tight and twisty section before they join the original layout again in the right hand hairpin coming up now. 
And now they'll finish off on the original track and carry on as it is. How amazing. Oh, I, I'm uh, so excited with all the racing going on here at the moment. But things do seem to be calming down. So that's um, uh, Nust still in the lead. That's Cambridge and Trinity St. David's going off in sympathy with each other there. Um, nicely held. No bouncing off the walls there. So they both live for another day. Um, very nice uh, slidey movements from both of them coming back onto the main straight there. But um, alas, the battle for third and fourth clumsily continues while Salford starts to catch up again down in fifth there. This is looking like a one-horse race for um, Southampton. This is going to bag them the championship if uh, neither Cambridge or Salford uh, can get through here. We need one of them in the A-finals um, to keep uh, Southampton on us. If they don't do that, we could be... Um, Declaring a champion before uh, the race is over here, but still a long way to go. That's only five minutes into this race, guys, so we've still got 15 minutes left, and then it's on to the GT3s at Silverstone, so we'll just have to keep an eye and see what they do next. We are looking at the YouTube chat, guys, so uh, if any of you are online at the moment, don't forget to have a look on there. I will be reading your comments, so if there's an opportunity to comment on anything that you're seeing, do leave a message in there and uh, we will get back to you ASAP. Um, looking at the, the small window in the bottom right corner there kind of gives you an appreciation of uh, what they're having to do to get around this track um, oh, in one piece. Let's follow them. So that's uh, Mr. Victoria that, that uh, we're looking at um, in the window just now where we were looking at. Mr. Yeah, there's still Mr. Victoria in the bottom right corner there. So uh, we'll... Uh, watch how he's going on and you can watch him on the screen there as well hopefully it will send us into an infinite loop of videos but uh yes now that seems to be working fine okay cool amazing so um yeah here we are at the virtual reality racing club just outside silverstone in the business park they've been very kind to allow us to use their facilities for for hosting round eight we had 33 drivers uh, in the series, uh, and 21 of them are actually here in person today. So, sorry, 22 of them are in person here today of the, those teams. So, it's been really competitive. It's been very tight trying to get them all uh, looped around in uh, time uh, to do their respective stints. Um, uh, but we've got there in the end. We're just about on schedule, maybe a couple of minutes behind, but uh, we're still going to be okay for the finals. That's uh, the most important one of all, of course. Um, but um, no, we'd be in, we're in their debt. The Virtual Reality Racing Club. You know, be sure to look them up on Instagram. We've been tagging them and everything. VR Racing Club. As I'm giving them some advertisement there, Cambridge takes second position. They are now into the A finals as things stand. Oh, how exciting! Now both of them are here in the room with me just now. So um, this could get very very competitive. And just as I say that, Cambridge go and bin it. No, 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 no. Alex, he's going to be kicking himself for that one. Down to fourth now. So, oh, <laughs> he could smell finals A for about 30 seconds there. And he fell off at that same corner again as we've been seeing them all fall off. Victoria have been holding on to it. Amazing. Keeping on to second place there. But um, Nust, they're running away with it um, in first place at the moment. Um... And fair play to these guys, because uh, unfortunately they've not been able to join us. Uh, we were hoping they'd be joining us uh, in real life as well at Silverstone for Formula Student proper. They've not been able to make it to Silverstone, to the UK. We don't know why. They're racing live from, I believe, Pakistan just now. Let, let me just double check on our uh, entry list here, just to make sure I'm thinking of the correct team here. It's team 20, uh, Nust. Um... Uh, my apologies from Oman. So uh, they're live from Oman at the moment. So they're racing from their, um, I'm hoping their university, but they could be actually doing this from their bedroom with uh, their own rigs. Uh, that's how some of the, the university students have been doing this. They've been just, they've been representing their uni, but they've been going it alone. And um, for some of the drivers, being here today and sampling direct drive steering wheels, hydraulic uh, loaded brake pedals. This is as close as you will get to real life racing. 
uh, it certainly feels like you're driving a real car when uh, you're, you're using those steering wheels at uh, the Virtual Reality Racing Club here. So um, if you guys are ever interested, go and look them up on their website. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, VR uh, Racing Club, and uh, see what services they offer because um, I'm probably being biased because I live for um, eSports, and even though my own channel is all about doing it on a budget, even I will say this is exceptional equipment that they have here and um, even though I prefer personally to do it on a budget with my uh, humble trusty Logitech G29 which I picked up for 100 quid from uh, eBay even I love to get onto these uh, amazing uh, pieces of equipment every now and then just to remind myself of what it's like when you go and do it properly and uh, hopefully the drivers here as well today have all been spoiled with the the equipment which you're seeing in the bottom right corner of your window just now which they are using <clears throat> Nust, unfortunately, they're missing out on this fun. I have no idea what they're using as a controller. They could be on a joystick for all I know. We're going to have to find out later and probably do a uh, live interview with them if possible. We're going to see if we can get hold of them later on and do an interview with them. But uh, if they're not around, well, they're, then they're not around. But uh, it would be great to be able to hear how they have done things their way. Nice little slideways moment there from Victoria in second uh, position. I'm sure they don't want to be trying too hard. That's half the race done. Ten minutes to go. Oh, I beg your pardon. Nine minutes and 20 seconds left to go. And uh, I'm sure that they will be wanting to consolidate the second position. As much as they, they would love to, uh, love to make it three out of three wins, they're not actually getting points here. They will only get points for the last finals which they competed in. So, so long as they stay in second place here, I'm sure they'll be very happy with that because that gets them into finals A and then they can go and hunt for the points properly there. But it still has to be said, for a team which did not turn up for any of the heats this morning, they weren't here for practice, they had no idea how these controllers fell to anything, and they've just rocked up, put in two amazing races to win, and uh, put themselves in a position to hopefully, if things stand, keep hold of second position and get into the finals A. Now, whilst with all my yammering away here, I've noticed that Southwoods have unfortunately fallen to the back of the field. Now, so Portsmouth have moved to fifth, so it must mean that Southwood have fallen off elsewhere. Um, this is a great shame. This was one of the championship contenders for the series. Uh, I know that they were really hoping to get into the A finals today um, to try and snatch away the title from, at the moment, Southampton, who currently have the most points uh, in the tallies. Uh, Cambridge are the only other people who can mathematically win this championship at the moment. As things stand, they're not going to win the title either unless they can get themselves into finals A. They are eight and a half seconds, nine seconds, let's go for, behind that fabled second position. There goes Southwood off the track again. Uh, quick recovery though that time, so that they did get away with it, that's fine. There's Alex Wilkinson giving it full beans out of that last corner every lap, nice and sideways. Uh, that's all you need, really. Um, trying to make the most of it and try and get himself closer. 129.9. It's just not enough. He needs to be pulling at least a second, second and a half a lap. His only saving grace now is if um, Victoria and Trinity St. David both get into a proper ding dong battle, either take each other out or hold each other up so much that they lose easily two seconds a lap and that allows them to capture and come back on but with the uh, six and a half minutes still to go let's not assume things are all set in uh, stone just yet because we've seen it in every other race so far just when we thought right that's it we're in position something random has happened I must wonder, I don't actually know how Dan is able to chat so much, because my voice is knackered, so, uh, <laughs> but then again, I have been yelling around here, um, what you haven't been seeing, guys, is where in between the races, I've been running around like a headless chicken, 
helping out with the, the One Fly Mechie team, with uh, Dane, with uh, all of the VRRC team, in uh, getting everyone into their um, into their rigs in time, because it's been such a tight timetable that, um, yeah, no, it, it, we would not have been able to have done as many races as we have today and get everyone through all of their respective races without the wonderful help of... Uh, yeah, uh, all of the IMAC key team who have uh, helped out today and the VRRC team for firstly allowing us to race here and secondly providing us with all of this support. Now as I chat away we're looking at the uh, tables. Um, so Victoria are still holding on to it. They're there in second place. It's theirs at the moment to lose finals A. Um, with Nuss just miles away in uh, first position just now. Uh, Trinity St. David, they're there in third. They're only six seconds behind Victoria, so um, all it takes is a little error from up ahead, and they'll be there to capitalise on it. But Cambridge, there they are. Sorry, apologies, I was uh, with the wrong person there. There we are. Trinity St. David in third position there in their Bock livery, Holden. And then right behind them, we have Cambridge in fourth. Trinity St. David have gone off again. And Cambridge have held on to it this time. So, more sideways moments from Alex Wilkinson. He loves that throttle, obviously. Just gunning it all the time. Let's ride on boards with him. Let's go for front bumper cam. We all love this. Look at that first corner. Isn't that ferocious? Nice on the apex there as well from uh, Cambridge. They're closing in on third. That's about a second a lap they're pulling in, but they need to do more than that if they want to get second off Victoria. With only four laps left. They kind of need a Christmas miracle now to progress into the finals A, eh? but, um, you know, it's July, it's only five months till Christmas, so maybe, maybe they will qualify for that miracle already. Nice save from uh, Trinity St. David there. It's, um, the rear tyres are obviously uh, beginning to get a little bit tired on these cars. Anyone tuning in live, feel free to throw in some comments. I'd be more than happy to talk about anything that you may have uh, going on. Um, we are live on the YouTube stream. I can see the comments. Trinity St. David early on the brakes. There's a lunge from Cambridge from way back. Ooh, they've got the outside. Trinity St. David coming back on that one. We're coming to the final couple of corners. It's a double left-hander. What's going to happen? Contact, they've both gone off into the grass. That was a bit inevitable. And that has now probably opened up the gap enough for Victoria to consolidate their second position. Um, yes, that's... <laughs> they're desperate for that third position and um, they, they really want to get themselves that second position as well. So, um, But yeah, they, they kind of need, as I say, a Christmas miracle because they're both 10 seconds behind Victoria in second and Nuss just running away with it at the front there. Um, leading as we are probably coming on to the second to last lap now, 2 minutes 30. So uh, we will have to see what happens there. Um, but uh, yeah, what, what a another interesting race we've had. Long Beach where they all went flying off at the first turn on the first lap. All did exactly the same again here apart from Nuss who um, were very wise to what was going on in front of them. And um, it's all kind of teetered since then, but my goodness, with two minutes left to go. Dan, what do you think of this all? Welcome back. Thanks, Ponty, for holding the fort in my absence. So it's the, uh, I've come back to, I think, story of the day has to be Victoria making it through, all the way through on the finals and looking like they're going to make it from uh, currently all the way into the A finals from having not made uh, made quality this morning. But um We've obviously been ramping the difficulty level up in the uh, in the car and track combinations through the finals as well, and uh, yeah, I understand I've missed lots of uh, lots of interesting action. So look forward to catching up on that on the on the stream later on. Absolutely, no. So some real memorable racing, some real memorable banditry moments as well. It has to be said. Um, I've never seen all the cars going straight on in turn one before, so to have it for two races in the trot. Um, I hope you guys on YouTube have enjoyed it as much as we have. That was. Um, yeah, that, that was just like nothing I've ever seen before, nothing I've expected before. But um, yeah, no, uh, we've got a minute to go. We should probably move on to Nust. Now, actually, they're so far ahead, they may get a 
another lap and so we'll probably have to see what's going on there um, I, think, I think I have to say Nost are the surprise of the weekend as well so um, they've done okay but not not great in our uh, in our uh, rounds one to seven so far but um, uh, yeah up there in the B final and they'll like be competing for for the honours in the A final as well on the strength of the performance in, uh, in this race Exactly. No, it's been really great to see uh, the team from Oman, unfortunately not able to join us in Silverstone this weekend uh, for the FS proper, but um, glad to see that they were able to at least take part online and um, yeah, definitely making use of those home comforts, which uh, Southampton uh, claim uh, does give them a competitive advantage. Um, don't know how much of that we want to factor into this one, Dan, but uh, either way, it's nice to see um, someone else apart from the usual four going on to win a race. Absolutely. Let's not go there again on the uh, on the, uh, on the the gripes of our, some of our uh, uh, student <laughs> entries. <laughs> exactly. Right. Three, two, one. Is he going to make the check? No, I think he's just missed it. There we are. Straight onto the finish line. So that's Nuston first. Victoria, it looks like, are coming through to second. Um... Indeed, so congratulations to them. They've made it through to the finals, A. Eh? What an amazing recovery drive from them there. But for Cambridge and for Salford, unfortunately, that's them knocked out at finals B. And I think that's the last of our championship contenders done. So um, whatever happens from now on, I think Salford have got this... Oh, Salford. Southampton have got this one in the bag, Dan. So now it now remains to be seen whether they can uh, do the job in the A final and sign off with uh, their championship with a victory in the, in the final round or we'll have, have all action. Some nice, ce nice celebratory burnouts from, or <laughs> commiseratory burnouts from, from Cambridge there. Absolutely. So, uh, no, can't wait for finals eight. We'll be coming back on in 10, 15 minutes time. Let's go and get ready for the interviews and let's go and welcome back our final A drivers to the server. Dan, I'll see you shortly. Let's go do some interviews.
Okay, welcome back guys. So we are preparing for finals A. As you saw, that was another amazing race there. So whilst we do that, Dan is now going to interview Victoria from finals B. Dan, over to you. Thanks, Monty. So we're here doing post-race interviews. There are winners from that last race, uh, NUST, they're at home racing. So we've got our second place finisher uh, from University of Victoria, Hector Lysol, and his uh, colleague, Jorge, who will be joining racing in the A finals. Really story of the afternoon, so you guys couldn't make qualifying this morning because of uh, judging for the main Formula Student event, but you've just managed to make it through the, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the E final, the D final, the C final, now the B final, and you're into the A final, and based on the pace that we've seen you demonstrate, in for the, uh, um, in there for, for the whole win. So tell us all about it. I think the sweat tells us a story, but tell us the rest. It's very hot in the cockpit, um, no ventilation, but well. Uh, it's pretty fun. The swim, the rig is so much better than mine. I feel so much confident. The, I have so much more conf consistency in my laps. Um, I'm really happy about that. The, the performance, really. I'm happy and, and focused for the next, next race. Oh, mate, it's been truly excellent to, have the, to be able to make it through. You have the opportunity, but then to be able to deliver on that race after race after race. That's excellent. Really, really well done. I'm sure you're proud and, uh, and you should be. So did, how much pre-event practice and setup development had you done? How prepared were you for so this? I, I actually did um, a preparation for Long Beach, which is the, the, tape, the race we did previously. I did a setup, but for the two previous ones, the MX-5 and, the, and this race, I didn't do anything. I just went with the default setting. <laughs> So driver skill as, as well there. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, congratulations, very well done. And so then Jorge, you'll be straight in the chair for the A final. So um, how confident are you feeling? I have a difficult task for me, but I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do the best work as possible to leave him the best position to start to the second part of the final, and just bring the car in and learn how the simulation works. That it looks really nice, and I can't wait to try it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure, as you say, you'll give it your, your best shot and we look forward to, to seeing how you guys get on in the a, a final part one and part two. Thanks very much. Best of luck. Thank you. And we'll be back shortly with the live stream of uh, both a final one and a final two. Look forward to giving you the commentary on that. But uh, thanks very much for now. Back to you shortly.
Well, hello guys, welcome. We're just into a, a little bit of a cool down session here before we uh, get on to finals A. So in about five minutes time, the servers are gonna go live, the drivers are going to start connecting. Dan will return to the commentating booth and we will go racing for our final two races of the day. Remember, finals A is split in two halves, finals A1 and finals A2, how imaginative. So, whilst we've got a bit of time to kill, we're gonna go for a wander around this wonderful facility here, which um, I'm not going to lie, they've done a wonderful job here with uh, hosting us all today. Very brave, given that they're all university students as well. But uh, let's go and have a chat with some of the uni students and see how they are feeling. Um, I've spotted our first victims here, so let's go and have a chat with them. It's Hole. It is Hole. Yeah. Fantastic. Hello, guys. You've had a cracking couple of heats. You've won both of your races. What's the expectations for uh, the finals then? Get as much points as possible and gain as much, you know, over the leaderboards as, as much as we can, yeah. Do you think you've got a chance of winning? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. There's always a chance, it's racing, yeah. Do you think you have a chance of winning then? Um, hopefully, yes, I'll try my best. More confidence, man, come on. Yes, yes. F fantastic, there we are, brilliant. Best of luck, guys. Um, you've really entertained us well so far, so got our fingers crossed for you guys as well so Thanks good luck good luck this, yeah. oh our pleasure our pleasure next up we have got the Southampton boys who I think we can now officially say congratulations guys you are now the champions for our first season as all your main protagonists have um, failed to make it into finals <laughs> A then mathematically <laughs> speaking you guys are now the champions so um, is pressure off or are you going to go for gold uh, pressure's off a little bit but um, we'd still like to go for the win um, especially because we've got everyone in the garage watching as well and we, we said we'd want to get the win for them so uh, we're <laughs> no, gonna, no pressure no. We're, we're gonna try our best um, but no it's really nice actually knowing that we've got the championship already really good feeling we're really really pleased oh well done uh, you guys are putting so much preparation as well this year that's um, obviously uh, just desserts I guess you could say so you put the effort in so you, you got the reward you needed for that Mr Preston I see you all set up for the first race yep. how confident are you yeah feeling pretty good Put in a good amount of practice in the GC3s at Silverstone, so should be fun. Very best of luck, guys. Thank and uh, I have to say, your skin looks amazing. <laughs> Reference, by the way, guys. Skin is what the cars look like. There's nothing weird going on. <laughs> so <laughs> there we are. Um, how much time have we got left? We've got enough time to go and chat to a couple of other guys, or uh, do we need to pass back to Dan? All good? Yep, all good? What, to speak to another person? Yes. Oh, let's go then. Right, okay. Right. Hello, Callum. Well, look, you shouldn't be here in time if you don't want to be interviewed. However, you've been doing the one-man show for Portsmouth EV so far um, this week. Actually, I should come this way just so it's a bit better for your angle, shouldn't I? So you've been the um, one-man show for Portsmouth EV. You've had to start at the back of the grid for every race. You've won the race every time. You're going to do the same here? I don't believe so. I Why not? This is the best of the best of the series. Uh, there's some really fast guys in here. I'm here just to have a bit of fun, see what I can do. If I can get near the top, then that's perfect. Sounds like a reasonable thing for me then. Very best of luck. Your skin, I can confirm, is on there. And it does look amazing as well. The grey and the blue. Of course, one of our IMEC key guys, Dane, he loves anything in the colour blue. So uh, every time we brought in a blue... Uh, livery for him to look at. Oh, I like that skin. So, um, yeah, no, it's uh, all good there. Anyone else we can go and pester, do you think, guys? Should we, should we go and have a try with them? Let's go over there then. Right, okay. So, um, uh, are they logging in or... <laughs> Hector, ready ready for a last interview? Got a, got a minute? Senor, senor, hello. I'm not, I'm not being rude. They, they are actually Spanish. They, they Obviously, most of the people who have uh, been doing uh, the series so far, they're all British. Uh, we've had a couple of people from different countries, from Canada, from Spain, Pakistan, Oman, taking part as well. We've just seen uh, Nust taking part there. You guys have travelled from Spain. Mm -hmm. Just for this, or are you in the FS proper? We are in FS uh, concept class. So we brought our car, but it's not finished. And then we also um, we came here to race. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you guys were able to join. And I have to say, I know Dan was singing your praises just before. Hmm. You've kind of shown everyone how it's done in the final so far. Well, What's the plan for this then? Confident you can do it again? Oh, we'll see, yes. Uh, we haven't uh, practiced too much, but we'll do what we can. I think that's uh, all you can do, really, isn't it? Yes.
best of luck. We've got our fingers crossed for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, no, there we are, fantastic. And then the last two competitors that will be joining for finals A, guys, uh, they are not here live. They will both be remotely connecting in, so that's going to be Bolton, Team 3, uh, who both, they won both of their races as well. And then uh, we saw there just before Nust, they won finals B, so they've progressed into finals A as well. Six cars, really looking forward to this. Um, are we ready to hand back over to Dan? All right, Dan, back over to you in the studio, sir. Thanks very much, James. So as we start getting ready for the first of our uh, A finals today, so starting to uh, assemble uh, the grids and the teams. Whilst we're we're getting that sorted, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Virtual Reality Racing Club who have hosted us uh, here for this today. If you uh, are interested in getting involved in sim racing, they do uh, sim racing championships, um, but they also do fun events here using the rigs that you've seen our drivers using today. But they also do driver coaching, uh, both for sim racing and for real world racing using the rigs and then uh, then onto track. So uh, please do check out their uh, their website. And if it's something that you're, yeah, you think they could help you with, get in touch with them via Discord or email from, the, from their website. It's been uh, fantastic for them uh, use of their their venue and their facilities for uh, for the uh, event today, and uh, yeah, we'll surely hopefully be back uh, next year for the grand final for for next year's sim race series. I just need to drop off commentary for a second while I push a few buttons to get the stream ready to uh, to share with you all. But we'll be back shortly, um, ready for the start of the A final.
Just for everyone on the stream, we're having some technical difficulties getting uh, all of the cars in for the A final, so we're delaying the start. I'll give you an update once we know when we're going to be uh, up and running.
Welcome back everybody. After a few technical difficulties, they are now all resolved and we are less than two minutes to the start of the first of our A finals, which is GT3s at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. On pole position, we have uh, University of uh, Bolton, followed by University of Hull, then Southampton, Victoria, Portsmouth EV and uh, NUS, NUST. You'll notice that some of the teams are running a uh, custom livery. So for the A final, we allowed the teams to submit bespoke liveries for their uh, for their cars. And I have to say, they all did a mighty impressive job of the um, of the liveries that they they chose to submit. They're uh, they're better than some of the professional liveries you see actually out racing in the in in the real world. Um, now less than forty seconds to go to the uh, to the start of this race. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out, whether it's uh, hopefully we've got some nice wheel to wheel action and dicing through the, through the whole race. I think we're similar on pace between the drivers who have made it through to the A final. There's some differences in the car capability and in the setups that they develop potentially, but we'll find out over the next 15 minutes. What do you reckon, Monty? Um, yeah, no, I agree with that one. Uh, car capability is going to be interesting. I think there's a reason why so many of them have gone for the McLaren, but. Um I love it if the Porsche and the Mercedes wins just to prove all them wrong. But the lights are going out now, so uh, moment of truth. And off we go. Bit of wheel spin off the line for Bolton there, but I think they're potentially going to get overrun into the first corner. Just about held on around the outside there from, uh, that looks like, Hull holding on to second. Uh, no, I beg your pardon, that's Southampton in second and uh, Portsmouth EV straight up into third position. Nice. From the back of the grid. So, coming around the slowest corner. Ooh, oh, no, and that's Bolton off. Oh, all that hard work, all done, and now Southampton have got it. Into the lead. Okay, bye bye. We won't see you again. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So, on board, on board with Bolton, coming down into Brooklyn's corner. Oh, breaking late apex for this before you uh oh again again bolton struggling uh, maybe it's tire warm-up at, at the start of the race but so already southampton stretching a, a lead of one and a half seconds portsmouth ev uh yeah they're they're in second bolton third uh 2.2 seconds behind nust in fourth uh victoria in fifth so it's worth knowing that so this uh for this first race, this is Jorge rather than Hector who's driving, so he has literally had zero seat time so far today. This is his first experience of the rigs here at the VRRC. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how he does through the final. And then in sixth place, we have your University of, of Hull. Let's switch to the outside camera as they take their first blast down the hangar straight on the run down to Stowe Corner. It's like Bolton here lining up a pass on Portsmouth. Not quite close enough to to uh, take that on this co that time, but decreasing that gap to Portsmouth in front. Portsmouth a little deep into into club that allows Bolton an opportunity up the inside as we complete our first lap. That is Bolton recovered to to second, but already with a 2.9 second gap to Southampton ahead so let's uh, let's see over the remainder of this lap whether they're able to to close that gap or it's going to really be a battle for second third fourth and fifth for the for the remainder of this final mm, absolutely it's um in theory we know who should be winning this one today but uh, as we've seen with uh, all the other races so far today um things do happen and uh, the unexpected does happen as well uh, i'm just glad to see that all the cars managed to get through turn one without flying off this time down actually <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, refreshing. Or oh, any protest is on the circuit. <laughs> well, it's because we haven't had the red flag on the first lap, so they didn't have a chance to go and uh, muck up their plan. But, uh, you know, that's fine. N no risk of that here. This is all online racing, so uh, we're not really using real petrol, guys. So uh, it's um, all electricity, isn't it? Let's ride on board with NUST for, uh, for a little while, so the, the gaps similar between second third and fourth uh, we'll be able to see whether they're able to uh, maintain or close the gap to, to Portsmouth in front and similarly keep an eye on Portsmouth relative to, to Bolton 
to say Silverstone we're naturally here for Formula Student it was the obvious choice for this uh, for this final but it is a fantastic circuit particularly the Maggots Beckett's complex that we're just running through and yeah there's the example in front now Portsmouth running across the road it's a uh, it's tricky to to execute cleanly and get the maximum lap time out of, a, of that very very high speed section running down into Stowe Corner at the uh, at the end of the lap slightly early apex there for NUST losing a little bit of time to Portsmouth EV on these two it looks similar match between Portsmouth and NUST but um, in another league to, to Bolton and Southampton ahead uh, Bolton four tenths of a second quicker than Southampton on that lap so with a 2.4 second gap there's plenty of time left in this final for them to close that gap down we'll keep an eye on the on the gap between those two and switch to that as it gets closer but for the moment this is the closest on track action we've got so we'll, we'll stay with, uh, with NUST for the moment As Monty mentioned in the intro, the vast majority of the field selecting the uh, the McLaren for this race, um, the Porsche and the uh, uh, and the Mercedes have quite different uh, handling characteristics to the to the McLaren. Uh, I think the Porsche is the trickiest of car to drive of the three, but if you can live with the uh, with the rearward weight bias and the vagaries of its uh, of its configuration, it can be the quickest uh, quickest car out there so NUST doing a, doing a decent job with a, with a tricky car so far yes absolutely it's uh, nice to see them uh, having a really competitive run here as well um, be interesting to see in the second race as well uh, how these cars behave on oh, that's an imaginative racing line um, it will be interesting to see how the cars behave in the second race because um, we'll be swapping their compound of tyres around. Uh, so currently they're all on medium compound of tyres. For the second half of the finals race they'll all be doing it again but with softer compounds of tyres. So um, it'll be interesting to see if McLaren still holds the edge there or if uh, any of the other cars are better suited to the softer compound. Yeah, and I don't know if they've developed uh, tyre-specific setups to suit the two compounds, or they've just got a single setup and they're going to be, uh, yeah, struggling to keep the, the soft tyres alive for the for the 15 minutes uh, duration of the uh, of the second race. Yeah, there, there are some teams I suspect have uh, been putting a good amount of effort into their preparation for this one, Dan, and um, it's. It's telling, actually. I think it would be fair to say, looking at just how some of the heats have gone today, how some of the finals have gone. Um, I think it'd be safe to say, watching all the drivers in final C and B go flying off in turn one means that they've never touched the circuit before. But um, ho hopefully, they're, they're all a, a little bit more familiar with um, Silverstone and uh, the combination of GT3 cars. Yeah, it's not quite ubiquitous as Spa in GT3s in sim racing world, but it's not far off it. It's the it's a close second. And if you've not driven it in GT3 cars, then there's a high chance you've driven lots of laps around a Silverstone Grand Prix circuit in, in <laughs> one, one form or another. Now, whilst we've been chatting away, I've noted Portsmouth EV are in the pits in fifth, apparently. Um, so I'm trying to work out what's happened there. I'm wondering whether he's accidentally hit the teleport to pits button on the, uh, on the steering wheel. So I'm just going to have a look in, into that. Be right back. Okay, thanks Monty Ross to investigate that. So that really has opened up um, uh, the, the field between your yeah, third, fourth and fifth. So let's go and ride on board with Bolton as they try and chase down Southampton ahead. The gap had reduced down to 2.3, 2.4 seconds, but over this lap it's, um, uh, it's stretched out again. So that gap's come down to two and a half seconds now. It may be that we're just seeing some relative strengths and weaknesses of the driver and the, and the setup around different portions of the, of the, of the lap. So if we uh, follow on board for a little longer, we'll see, we'll see, how, that, see how that develops. So oh, 50, 50 milliseconds difference between the two teams on, on that lap, but in the favor of Southampton. So the gap going the wrong way for, for Bolton.
Pato Bolton a little late on the brakes into the uh, the village complex there. Did go positive on the lap delta, but they're uh, yeah, recovered now, showing negative on the delta for this lap. Gap around 2.4 seconds still. Let's see how it develops for the uh, over the remainder of this lap. Around Luffield, key to get on the on the power as early as possible, but maintain the traction and not to get the wheel slip to get the exit speed all the way down the old start finish straight. And the GT car cops is a is a proper corner, so it's a a lift and down downshift to fifth, back hard on the power, flat for the first left, and a lift and a downshift for the right. Again, down to fourth for the next left and the tightest right before we then back onto the hangar straight. We were nearly two tenths up on the previous best lap, uh, going through the Magus Beckett's complex, but that's uh, yeah, lost some on the exit and the gaps opening up to Southampton in front. But it is staying relatively stable. I don't know if there's any uh, aspect of Southampton trying to manage their pace uh, for to keep the tyres and just managing that gap. All this is you know, genuine competition uh, between the two, with just under five minutes of the, of the race uh, left to go. We'll uh, yeah, we'll find out soon enough. So Monty's back. Any news on on? Uh, the issue for Portsmouth? So unfortunately, uh, Portsmouth EV, um, they were disqualified. So it looks like they had a jump start and uh, did not serve the penalty in three laps, so it's thrown them out of the race. Oh, that's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. So I'm um, going to review that one afterwards, as uh, Callum feels a bit aggrieved by it, naturally. But um, he doesn't recall seeing the notification on his screen. But uh, unfortunately, there's nothing much we can do at this point. Um... Apart from, yes, uh, that's him confined to the back for this race, and hopefully he can make up for it in the second race and grab back some valuable points there. Yeah, indeed. I guess we, we can check whether the no notification should be uh, should be showing, but uh, it's binary. Uh, yeah, if the start was jumped, um, there's no human subjectivity in this in the, with the simulator. If the, if the rules were breached of the, of the jump start, yeah, it will see it as a, as a jump start, but... Yeah, unfortunate, but they, yeah, these, these things happen. The field is really spread out, uh, other than our battle between first and second here. And that is a reasonable gap again at two seconds, so not quite the close racing we were, we were hoping to, to get. And that looks like a very wild moment for, for Bolton coming through. Maggots and Beckett's and the lead stretching the lead stretching for Southampton out to three seconds. So we've spoken about them a lot, but we've not really seen them so far this race. So let's switch the, the camera to uh, Southampton. Yep, Michael Preston doing um, another very fast race, it has to be said. Just um, going to the front, controlling the pace and uh, doing what we've kind of come to expect of him from the whole season, really, Dan. Absolutely. I think they've had strong performance in, in most of the races uh, we could call it fuel gate if we remember Barcelona <laughs> where, where not one but, but two of the teams managed to, uh, to run out of fuel on their last lap giving us, uh, giving us high drama um, and I, I understand he did exactly the same thing in a separate online race uh, <laughs> uh, race with you but that, that aside um, <coughs> yeah, it's been a strong performance all year from uh, from Southampton Bolton have been putting in you know, good performance as well in some of the races but not quite the same level of consistency which is why you know, coming into this final it's, it is already a done deal really for, uh, for, for Southampton and it's the, what's turning out to be the victory parade but Yes, quite. It's um, uh, yet another dominating performance from them, but um, I have to give them kudos where kudos is due. They've um, they've prepared a lot for this. They've um, thrown a lot of good questions our way over the, the course of the season, so um, they have taken it seriously. They've done the preparation, and uh, I think it's quite telling in, just in their results of um, how much they wanted to win this, and... Um, yeah, no, that's what I mean. It's just uh, another example of them doing what they have been doing so well. In the last round, round seven, 
Uh, they were the first team to score over 100 points in a round. So, um, for reference, guys, it, normally what it would be would be 50 points per race. So, we would run two races per round. So, that's 100 points there. But then they also got the bonus points for um, fastest lap, for pole position. So, uh, they're the only team to have got over 100 points scored in one round in anything that we've done so far. And... Um, it will be interesting to see if they can do the same here, if uh, they win this finals A overall and get the fastest lap for it. Well, another plus 100 points for them on the, their merry way to their championship. I think that's what's called rubbing their noses in it, but they, uh, but anything can happen. <laughs> and I think we've been giving our best effort of commentators' curses with the uh, singing the praises and talking about it. Let's see if they can uh, hold it together over the remaining uh, this is going to be the last lap for um, uh, for Southampton, and then for yeah, uh, drivers in the in the in the follow on follow on race. So Bolton have managed to get the gap down to just over two seconds now. So we'll switch back to on board with Bolton. But barring any disasters struggle to see how they're going to be able to close that gap and complete a pass by the end of the race but stranger things have happened and strange things certainly do happen on our servers Dan <laughs> yes indeed yeah so there's a notification the leaders on the final lap as we said this is uh, going to be the last lap of uh, the race in our first final. We'll switch back to see Southampton Bolton cross over line, but let's check in with NUST quickly. So still there third place, but roughly 30 seconds uh, behind from the leader. Hull in fourth place, just starting uh, the lap and Victoria look like they've just recovering from a spin there. almost about to be lapped by Southampton. Can we come down into Vale in the club corner for the last time. Safely navigating the final corner and across the lap for victory for Southampton in the first of our A finals. Bolton across the line safely in second place. Congratulations to Southampton and Bolton. That was uh, amazing driving from both of them there in the end. Only two seconds gap. Uh, and uh, Nust coming through for an amazing third position. Uh, remind again, uh, they're doing this as a one-man show for uh, this uh, today's uh, events. And uh, they're doing this all remotely from Oman. So fair play to them for putting the effort in. And uh, definitely been doing some practice to make sure that they were on the competitive edge for this one, Dan. Yeah, indeed, it's a it's a strong performance compared to what we'd seen in the uh, in the previous uh, online only rounds rounds one to seven. Uh, well done to them. So that's our podium confirmed for the final. Um, Hell coming through now, just towards the end of the lap to secure their fourth position. And then I think an honourable mention for uh, for Jorge from Vitoria. First time he's touched the 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 rig or the car on track today, and um, uh, yeah, it's not dishonourable <laughs> performance given that lack of experience uh, versus the others. So bringing the car home shortly in in fifth position. So we'll we'll get ready for the post race uh, interviews shortly. Um, let's try and do that. Oh, I'm apologies. I'm just uh, yeah being corrected. We're going we're going straight into the um, uh, second of the finals rather than doing post race interviews. Now we will drop off the commentary for a little while whilst we um, uh, uh, do all the ones and zeros to get the server up and running for race two. So we will be back with you shortly for the conclusion of our sim racing today. 
talk to you shortly. Thanks very much.
So we have all drivers in the server getting ready for the culmination of our sim racing grand final. So it's the second race of the GT3s at Silverstone. The grid, second, pl sorry, ignore, I've got the TV car, ignore that in first position. So pole position, uh, Bolton, second place, University of Hull, third place, Southampton, fifth is Victoria, sixth, Portsmouth EV and NUST in uh, in seventh, and these uh, are apart from the single uh, driver entry teams. Uh, this is the uh, second drivers for each of the other uh, universities, so uh, not guaranteed to be a repeat of what we saw in the in the previous race. With one minute thirty on the clock to go. Getting ready for these final 15 minutes of racing. And this draws to a conclusion uh, a journey for the FS in racing that started back in October 2021 with round one um, at Autodrome Must. Um, and we've been all around the globe to all the different countries that Formula Student uh, is represented uh, at in the actual uh, race series. And we're running down to the, yeah, this culmination here, GT3s uh, running round at Silverstone. We are going to try and, because we've not been able to talk to all of the race winners from the heats or the finals through the day for those that are accessing remotely, we're working on getting some uh, post-race uh, interviews uh, for, for those guys. So we get the opportunity to talk to those as, uh, as well as those who are here today. And again, I just want to give a shout out and a plug to the Virtual Reality Racing Club who've hosted us uh, here today. Fantastic facilities. Please do have a look on their their website, uh, get in touch with them on Discord and talk to them about uh, you know, what they can offer you for fun events, putting on parties, driver coaching. Um, yeah, it's it's been, uh, we've been fantastically hosted and uh, impressed with their, with, with their kit. We're now, lights are short, shortly coming on. Red lights coming on, and we are. We're off, hopefully, with no uh, jump starts this time. It's like a clean getaway for uh, for Bolton. Hull slotting into second. Southampton there in third. Oh, NUST have made, again, from back of the grid up to third place, so similar to to race one although Southampton have snaffled that back I'm just going to try and bring the camera back a couple of cars to make sure we get more of the more of the action so we're riding on board with Southampton here let's go back one more car there we go opportune moment to change camera that's uh, NUST attempting a pass up the inside into Brooklands oh but not able to live with the uh, uh, Porsche handling it seems so they uh, have a large oversteer moment also possible contact with Portsmouth EV so close behind them there but at the front Bolton are oh, stretching out uh, a lead so one and a half seconds already to Hull in second place into Maggots and Beckett's for the first time. That's a, ooh, that's a, what you might call a major detour. <laughs> Let's see how the, the gap is between them at the end. So I think no advantage gained on there. They've lost time going through. That's a, certainly not the way you want to be going through those, those high speed corners. So the gap opening out to two seconds, that's allowing Southampton behind to, to close up on Hull. But our closest battle looks to be between uh, Vittoria and Portsmouth EV. Very, very close between them. So let's keep following this action for a little while longer. So struggling for breath, an action-packed first lap between the different areas. But at the same time, we have already had a re large amount of uh, a, f a field spread, so 10 seconds behind in fifth place already. We've seen some 
pretty amazing performances from uh, from Hector from uh, Vittoria so far today. Let's see if he's able to uh, to pull it out the bag again for pull that gap down over the remainder of this final. But at the moment, it looks like that lead is is stretching relative to the other cars, and Portsmouth EV have got a pace advantage. So let's jump forward and ride on board with with Callum from Portsmouth. So see on the relative compared to a compared to a standing start, much much quicker uh, on this lap, and also compared to the previous lap where they had the had the incident. So it should be a much more competitive lap time. And I'm not sure what's happened to Hull, but we're past through past Hull. So that's Portsmouth up into third. Everyone taking the. Uh, very, very wide line through Cops Corner there. Moving forward, so Southampton still in second, but the gap to Bolton in front has ballooned out to, to five seconds already. So I uh, don't think there's going to be a great amount to to see for, for much longer between those, well, for the moment, between those two cars. So let's uh, switch back to middle of the action between Portsmouth, Hull and, uh, and Vittoria. We'll have to try and find find out after the race what happened to, to Hull there because it was a, a sudden loss of pace but no obvious spin or contact with the wall. So Bolton last lap, time of two minutes. And we've seen 2.04, 2.13 and 2.07 for the guys here. So uh, nowhere near as competitive as the uh, as, our, as our leader. Some of that would be down to a particular mistakes on the, on the, on the lap. But um, yeah, just seeing Bolton and Southampton continue to extend the gap to this gaggle of uh, three cars. And after a very strong start, NUST do appear to be uh, struggling badly. So uh, I'm not sure whether they've picked up damage on their car from from one of the uh, one of the incidents, or maybe they've got a hardware issue with a rig they're using uh, back at home. But already not far off being not far off being uh, lapped and a, and a whole lap down. So running on board with. Hector from Vittoria in fifth place, 20 seconds off the leader nearly. But um, it's been a stunning run through the final to get to the A final, but so far doesn't appear to have the pace to be able to progress up the field. Moving forward on board with Hull, let's see if we can, there's no obvious sign or reason for why they're they dropped that position to Portsmouth EV, so I think it must have been a mistake on the driver's side, not an issue uh, issue with the car. They are no, no, continuing on at, at a reasonable pace. And Portsmouth running in a respectable uh, third position. They're still in the race, so clearly no uh, jump start at the start of this uh, second of our, our finals. A lap time of 2.03, that is yeah, quite a bit slower than the pace of our leaders, so that gap of 15 seconds to, to Bolton, expecting to continue to grow lap, lap by lap. And between Southampton and Bolton, that gap's now grown to uh, six and a half seconds. So, unfortunately, just the nature of how this is spread out, uh, the uh, the culmination of our, our racing for this final, it's a little bit of a damp script, to be honest. Not a great amount of track action, but it is a, a demonstration out front again of preparation, driver consistency, and uh, yeah, you can you build build a lead with uh, consistent, repeatable lap times. So 
let's switch to riding on board with our leader. And show us the how it's done for a high speed lap around the fabulous Silverstone circuit. Into Stowe Corner with the late apex, picking up the power as early as possible. Run down the veil into Chicane and Club Corner. Small lift before you then get back on the power and then as early as possible hard on the power for the run across the start finish line. In a GT car, this first corner is just a lift, turn in, then back on the power hard. Should be fully flat through this left-hander and braking just before the kerb on the left-hand side. Tight on the, on the right-hand side into the slowest corner at the Silverstone track. Traction key coming out of this one. You're flat through the next left-hander, carrying that speed all the way down the, uh, down the straight into Brooklands. Again, curbs a similar braking mark for, for this for this corner. A very very late apex at uh, Brooklands, giving you the entry into Lafield. You can take that corner a couple of ways. This one you can V it or a, or a conventional late apex, as we're seeing. The not a corner for for most uh, cars. I have to say, having spectated at MotoGP, it's very different for bikes there. That is a significant corner in the bikes they're trying. But for, yeah, for cars, not very much of a corner at all. Three cops corner. And then into the fabulous Maggots and Beckett's complex. Flat through the first left, a lift for the right. And then you're just gradually decreasing speed, but carrying as much speed through the following sequence of corners before accelerating it out hard onto the uh, hangar straight and we'll have shortly completed that full lap on board uh, with Bolton. So Monty's made a return. Hello. Um, so hello, welcome back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Apologies for that. Just went to see how everyone's getting on with there. It's um, not a word being uttered by any of the drivers in there at the moment and there's just sweating buckets load now. It's so hot up here but um, don't question their focus. They're, they're all giving it absolutely everything that they can and um, I'm just trying to I think I may need to go and read our rule book here because at the moment Dan as things stand we're going to have a tie for the winner I've commentators curse now isn't it but uh, oh, we'll see. I, okay. because uh, we had Southampton win the first race with Bolton second yes and this one we've now got Bolton leading with Southampton second which means as it's an average of the two results they're both equal, so I may need to go and re-refer to our rule book just to remember what we've decided. I believe it's based on who did the most fastest laps. But um, yes, I'm just downloading a copy of our uh, regulations just now. Yeah, um, in, in anticipation of the expected result, we'll actually say there's still time for, for it to change, but it does look like it'll be a, it's a nailed on uh, first place for Bolton and Southampton to, to come home in second. We managed we managed two races without having to change the rule book. We'd been uh, an update to the rule book every round before that. So oh, I think uh, as we as we develop this sim racing series and, and you know, um, continue to to grow and to learn, I think yeah, we might find that we uh, need a, need an addition to the rules for for next year. But I think, however, we do decide uh, to allocate the points for this result. It won't make any difference to the overall uh, championship positions. The yeah. only question is whether there is a clear, distinct winner or, uh, I think, in the honour of the uh, the fun nature of the Sim Race series, if it's shared honours, commentators curse. We spoke too soon. That's that's Portsmouth, isn't it? Oh, sorry, you're right. Oh, phew. Phew. Like, oh. This, this, this was my James Allen moment from yeah. earlier on. So. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. We both had a James Allen moment. That's good. We're fine. There we are. We're with the actual leader now. So rest assured, anyone uh, from Bolton watching, <laughs> don't worry. You guys are still leading this one absolutely fine. Apologies, panic over. That's what you get for trying to do three things at once rather than two things at once. Two things at once is just about doable. Three <laughs> things is really is really beginning to uh, to stretch it. But I think the, um, as I, as I was saying, the, the this sim race series, we've always said that primarily it's a fun series, 
we want people and we don't want people to take it too seriously at the expense of the enjoyment of all of the people taking part as we've seen from some of the people uh, some of our entrants they are taking it very seriously they're being very professional about the level of preparation and practice that they're doing beforehand but they're still racing in a fair manner and we're not seeing you know, uh, you know uh, malicious contact between cars on track which is the sim racing turn one monza that we're uh, uh, trying to uh, avoid as much as possible so we'll have to see what the rules say and whether it's covered for already monty but if not if we are points equal then uh, i think it would be a, a fitting uh, shared victory between two teams rather than have to decide a winner I think it would be actually however apparently I've been much more prepared than I thought Dan because I'm just reading through the rules now and um, there is actually a clause in here <laughs> so apparently we've been much more organised than we thought throughout this whole year so well done so con there congratulations so <laughs> <laughs> first thing we say to the students is uh, is read the rules and uh, yeah, I'd love to fall in victim of my own uh, uh, no, no, no. To be fair, there's so many rules in here. It's one. Of, it's one we've not had to utilise yet. So um, it's understandable. This is one that we have forgotten. Some of the questions we do get from some of us, dear students, are stuff like, uh, "What time is driver's briefing?" or um, "What time am I on racing today?" And I'm going, "Did you read the rules?" No. Ah, well, okay, off you go. You go. So, you go. so it's not a tiebreaker question. How do we break the tie? Okay. So, uh, in the event where two or more teams' combined average results end in a tie, a count back will be based on their best individual finishing position, which in this case looks like will be a tie. So, there's a disclaimer underneath which says, however, in the event where the best individual finishing position also ends in a tie, we will use the team's fastest lap from A1. And in the unlikely event where that also matches, bearing in mind this is to a thousandth of a second, we will then determine, determine it based on final A2's fastest lap. Okay, so uh, reasonably complicated, but clear on how that is uh, decided between, uh, between all eventualities covered. Uh, well done, sir. <laughs> It's as if I used to be a student, a formula student once myself, so I know what kind of loopholes we have to look out for. <laughs> yeah. It's almost uh, like you're expecting, in the event, if you see a pig flying past at 10,000 feet, then this is the scenario we're going <laughs> to go, 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 deploy. Exactly, exactly. That, that one not not required to, to reach for, but it does look like, as we how on the final lap now of this uh second a final that bolton are going to come through in first place southampton in second hull in third i'm going to stop i'm going to i'm going to wait for a while and we'll redo this towards the end of the lap because it's a it has, has, has a strong strong potential um Strong, strong potential for uh, stuff to change further, further down the field. Absolutely, a couple more corners to go. Hopefully, Bolton can hold on to this. But uh, oh, nail-biting stuff after all the races we've seen so far today, Dan. Absolutely, it's a diff it's a different kind of nail-biting. So it's the you know, so for the Bolton guys, for the Southampton guys, it's just uh, seeing stretching out to the last few corners amount of races in real world and other sim races where you've just seen someone drop it at the last corner snatching defeat from the jaws of victory absolutely but it looks like we are safe from this one because Bolton are through over the line and to take victory in the finals a2 there's George Palos through in second for Southampton by the looks of things. Fantastic. So um, I've got a bit of number crunching to do now to average these positions. And as they've both had a first and both had a second, time to go and look at what their fastest laps were. And we will um, declare the winner very, very shortly, I think, uh, Dan. Yeah, I think the method of declaring that will be who appears for the post-race interview. So, uh uh, <laughs> Yes, so uh, watch the space. Whoever you see us uh, interviewing, you know, has um, won it. Yes, so it's a customary end of uh, race turn one exit for our whole team. Just two more cars to get across the line. And then we'll end the stream of the final. We'll drop off commentary for a moment whilst we uh, uh, run the numbers for... Uh, our, our winner of overall winner of round eight of this Formula Student uh, Sim Race series, and we'll be uh, yeah let, 
there ready for the live interview with them very shortly. Thanks very much for um, for everyone who's watched in today. Again, a big thank you for uh, Virtual Reality Racing Club for hosting us um, here today in their fantastic facilities for Hi-Viz Media, for uh, uh, sourcing the, the streaming onto YouTube and all the, the cameras for the uh, for the action you've seen here in uh, in the VRRC and the um, and the post race interviews and of course thank you for to the IMECI for making all of this possible as part of the Formula Student Series. We do hope that you've enjoyed uh, not only this grand final here at Silverstone but the rest of the series of the previous uh, seven rounds. We look forward to uh, coming back uh, again for SIP Formula Student Sim Race uh, Series 2023. I'm amazed we're talking about 2023 already when we're in the blazing sun of, of July, but it'll be it'll be here before uh, we know it. But that's that's already going on to the next. Let's let's celebrate at the moment the the victors and the end of uh, at the end of this 2021-2022 uh, uh, series. But that's a that's a thanks from me. Um, look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.
So after some minor technical dif difficulties, at the end of the day, we have the glimpse behind the Wizards curtain. So we're here in Operations Centre where we've been running the uh, race series for uh, for all of today. And the winner of round eight by the finest of margins. So we had the draw on the points between Southampton and Bolton. On the second screen here, you can see the, uh, the fastest lap from the finals A1 and it was just over 50 milliseconds difference between the fastest lap to Southampton and Bolton. But so those 50 milliseconds, they mean that Southampton are the winner of round eight and really confirming, uh, yeah, they'd already sealed the championship based on their performances through on the previous rounds. And yeah, a round eight here, victory parade. So congratulations, <laughs> very, very well done. Um, yeah, how, did you, how did you find it today and particularly in the finals? Today's been really, really good. Um, I think coming into uh, an environment like this when we're all on the same sims and all of us are on sims that are different to what we've got at home, I don't think anyone really knew what to expect. Um, we tried to prepare as well as we could and we spent a lot of time trying to dial setups down and uh, try and almost emulate the environment we were going to be in as much as possible. Um, but then, yeah, you never really know what happens until you get there. And um, today's gone really well, actually. Um, Heats, we got a first and a second, which actually, honestly, we thought would be quite comfortable in the A final, but we only just made it in fourth position. Um, however, once the final started, we knew we had the pace. Um, Mike started off um, from third, got an amazing start and ended up leading the race for most of the way. Um, and yeah, got a really fast lap time as well that ended up winning us the whole event. Um, and then on my side, I, I managed to get into second place off the start and essentially just hold it there. We knew we didn't quite have the pace of Bolton on the soft tyres in, uh, in the second final. Um, so really it was just about consolidating, trying not to spin on those overheating softs at the rear and um, yeah, just bring it in second. And uh, that meant we brought the win today. Yeah, congratulations. So we can't see the tyre temperatures on when we're riding on board with you for the stream. So were you, <laughs> were you yeah, flirting on the edge of that orange-red danger zone for the, for the rear tyres the whole time, were you? Yeah, exactly. It's that rear left, especially through the high-speed corners such as Stowe and Cops. You have to really, really take it easy. And um, no, we managed to hold it together, which we're very, very pleased about. Yeah, so congratulations. It's treading the, treading the fine balance. So we were just talking before we went live about how much you've enjoyed doing the, the sim racing series and that you, you hope to return next year. So for anyone watching on, uh, on the stream from uh, other universities who might be interested in getting involved next year, just tell us, uh, yeah, g give us some um, examples of, of why they should get involved and how much you've enjoyed it. Yeah, no, so we definitely recommend as many teams as possible enter. Um, you can take it as seriously or as fun as you like. We've taken it fairly seriously. We spent lots of time trying to dial setups in and really, really practice hard. But we know a lot of other teams as well have done less practice and still enjoyed it much the same. Um, what we really got out of it is actually that setup side of things. So when we spend lots of time doing our practice sessions, really learning about the handling, car handling, handling characteristics of each car, uh, and exactly how we can dial the setup for each of the specific circuits. And that's been a really, really great learning experience as well because we've not had to apply that just to one car, but to many cars across different tracks and many different types of cars as well. Yeah. So actually, I, yeah, go on, sorry. I, I I'm glad to hear you say that. So in, in how we chose the car and track combinations, we were testing those before the event and we wanted to make sure there was a, a level of challenge, but also that they weren't impossible to drive for the for the less experienced of uh, the, the competitors. So um, yeah, glad to hear if it sounds like we struck the right balance. Did you have driver specific setups or did you work on trying to get a setup that uh, either of you could, could drive successfully in the car? So normally we would start with a bit of practice just alone. Um, so Mike, who was my main partner in, in the event, um, we do our own practice, maybe try and get a, a little bit of a setup. Um, but once we start getting on the pace, that's when we combine forces and really just try and dial one god tier setup that we can use in <laughs> in the race really and um so from that side it was a very collaborative effort as well um not only from mike but also from boris as well so boris was helping us on the operational side of things yeah so, um, so i understand you had effectively a race engineer for this as well as you as drivers so yeah so, yeah you're really reflecting how people do go race racing in the real world and they're confirming these are transferable skills that you've been practicing and uh, yeah, if you choose to go down that yeah, part of the, the career path post post university or continue to compete in esports which is a, also a, a growing area then it's a, another example of formula student helping the yeah, young engineers edge of the future Young engineers of the future, my term to wrestle over <laughs> a tongue twister, uh, to, to develop and grow. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your, uh, your competition today and through the, through the rest of the series. Look forward to um, yeah, giving you the award proper in the award ceremony uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow night. And we're just about ready to, to close and wrap up for our time here at the 
uh, at Silverstone. I want to say a big thank you to Rich Hayden from uh, the Virtual Reality Racing Club for allowing us the, to use this fantastic facility. The, the rigs we've had behind us run faultlessly all day and the um, uh, so lots of the drivers haven't had experience of such high-end uh, rig equipment beforehand. Big thank you to uh, Monty, who has been the event captain and uh, done uh, so much of the hard work in the background through this throughout throughout the year for each of the uh, each of the events. And thank you to Hivers Media for providing the uh, streaming services for today. And a big thank you for IMEKI for making everything that happens on, on Formula Student and allowing us to continue this as part of uh, post-COVID. We developed it in 2020 fully virtually and we've uh, you carry on and we'll continue next year to develop into uh, bigger and better things again. Thanks very much for everyone for watching. Look forward to, hope you enjoy the rest of the Formula Student event and look forward to talking to you, commentating on the Sim Race series going forward next year. Thanks everyone. Good night. <laughs>